And welcome everybody to another episode of the Wrong Side Simulation, bringing the best content from the wrong side of the airplane, the right seat. And as always, my name is Blake and I'm a real world flight dispatcher aiming to bring you a little more context to your flight sim viewing experience. Today is a very special episode. We are celebrating hitting half a grand on the subscribers, 500 subs, never thought I'd ever get to this milestone whenever I first started doing this whole streaming thing. So I figured... Let's do something different. Uh, obviously, we fly yellow airplanes pretty often on this channel. Um, <clears throat> but what we don't do is international delivery flights. And by international delivery flights, I mean we're taking an airplane from the Airbus factory, which is international to the United States, and bringing it home to its new, uh, to its new home. That sun glare thing starting to drive me nuts. So, we're going to split this up a little bit. Um, typically, this journey is a two-flight journey. Um, the first leg is Toulouse, France, to Keflavik, Iceland, and then from Keflavik over to Detroit to uh, the maintenance hangar where the aircraft is dropped off, processed, um, and then ultimately, several days later, put into service. So, before we get started, I need to get this. So I can hear myself. Because <clears throat> uh, if I can't hear myself in the headset, then I sound too quiet. And then I'll start yelling. And it won't be great. And I was probably just talking really loud right there. I'm taking a sip of coffee because uh, we have the time set to uh, early morning here in Toulouse. Um, for international delivery flights, they leave at 9 o'clock local time out of Toulouse. So that is what we are aiming for today. So over to the chat, Zach, what is up, dude? Welcome aboard. Great to see you. My boy Rio, Flaps 121 Simulations. What's up, dude? How's the day going? And Mr. Robert, what's up, dude? Bring the champagne. Damn right. We're going to christen this uh, this here new airplane. So I did have a good friend of mine make uh, a Neo livery for me for the aircraft that uh, uh, we'll be bringing over um, November 11th. Uh, which will be my first international delivery flight to process um, mostly by myself as the dispatch manager being this being one of my special projects so that tail number is uh, November 966 November Kilo 
and I had a buddy of mine paint it up for me. <clears throat> but um, I was doing some test flights last night in the fly by wire, which is what the you know what the Liberty is for, and that's the Neo aircraft. And um, I was having some issues with it. Still, it's it's a little buggy in the way that it draws the lines on the ND, and I was getting like disconnects on the ND. It's weird stuff. So I was like, you know what? Let's just play it safe. Um, it's a 500 sub special, so I want to make sure that this actually works. So we're going to fly um, the classic or the CO. Um, and we're just going to pretend like it's November uh, 966, November Kilo a Neo, even though it's obviously not. <clears throat> but nonetheless, guys, I appreciate y'all coming around and coming to hang out on this uh, little journey. Uh, we will be flying on VATSIM, which I am very scared of. Uh, I've never flown in Europe on VATSIM ever. Uh, so this will be very new to me. Um, last I looked, Toulouse was not in, uh, looks like they're still not. Uh, Toulouse is not in controlled airspace, um, but we do have a few centers to go through. And looks like nothing going on in Keflavik as of right now. So I don't know, we'll see how it goes. It'll be pretty cool to um, hear some foreign accents on, uh, on frequency. So <clears throat> let's chat a little bit about the flight itself um, and the process of delivery flights. Uh, this is a new special project that I have been tasked with um, at my company. And the process for a, uh, an international delivery flight typically starts roughly about, hey, hey what's up, Shaq? Yeah, welcome back. I know, right? I haven't streamed in... Well, I streamed, I think, last week, but then it, it ended in tragedy as uh, my side stick glitched out and the airplane crashed. Um, we were starting our descent, and the stick read full nose up and right roll, and long story short, we crashed, so I deleted that episode. Um, <clears throat> but yes, we are finally back at it. Uh, so, the process for an international delivery flight typically starts about... Uh, at least for me, starts about a month in advance. We get a an email from the treasury saying, "Hey, uh, here are here's a tentative um, schedule. We anticipate transfer of title on this date. Uh, so we'll typically operate the ferry flight, bringing the aircraft home um, a day or two after the transfer of title. Uh, so from there, it's a little bit of a, a process of sending some communications um, to different entities." Getting fuel and handling set up, getting um, like an EAPIS and a gen deck and all the like customs stuff, uh, at least the few that we do on our end, getting all that set up, who the crew is that's going to be flying it. Um, chief pilots are, are the only pilots that fly these international delivery flights at my company. Um, who the quality control maintenance inspector that's going to be um, on the airplane. Um, make sure, make sure it's kind of like everything is all set up. Um, and then from there, just a bunch of like admin type things. Uh, then from there we start, you know, kind of getting the flight plan, like the the preliminary flight plan going. Um, we'll figure out what our route's going to be, make sure that the route is still validated with Euro Control. Uh, if there's been an ARAC uh, cycle change, that you know any any changes that have happened that we've accounted for that. Um, there's also some CPDLC restrictions uh, that. Uh, we have to deal with, but we are exempt from most of it. So we put a little special code in the ATC strip so that the controllers know that we are uh, exempt from the CPDLC requirement. Um, <clears throat> although we do have CPDLC coming um, at my company, just with this international stuff, um, we aren't in the registry yet, so we can't do it yet. Um, yeah, so we just kind of you know try to uh, plan everything out and. We don't want to run into any issues because the the problem is for the chief pilots that are flying the flight back to uh, back to the states. It's a long flight day. Um, they're flying both legs in the same day, uh, so it's about three and a half hours from Toulouse to Keflavik, and then from Keflavik to Detroit, I believe, is like five and a half, six and a half hours. So it's a long flying day, um, and we don't want to incur any delays on the ground because that's just making their their day even longer. Uh, so we try to have everything set up and approved through your control, um, flight plans on file, um, you want everything squared away so that we don't screw over the pilots and make their day long. Um, 
so I did I've done one international delivery flight so far uh, it was a flight that I've done with um, another dispatch manager and then another ops manager uh, the ops manager has usually been the one doing doing the international delivery flights and he's transferring it over to us um, and it went mostly smooth we had a little bit of a hiccup uh, getting out of Toulouse uh, we were about 18 minutes late pushing because of uh, a slight misspelling of one of the pilots last names um, on a document and that led to a late push which led to uh, the flight plan um, becoming inactive with Euro control now big difference between Euro control and United States if this were to happen in the United States we have two hours from the time that uh, from the P time that the dispatcher files once the crew picks up their clearance it's good for two hours no matter what and then the crew can make positive contact with tower and we can keep it going even longer than that Euro control on the other hand apparently uh, and we learned this the hard way they would already picked up their clearance but because they weren't ready to taxi their uh, after they were late by 15 minutes flight plan is now inactive uh, so it was a little bit of a fiasco trying to figure out how to resolve that because uh, Ultimately, we just needed to send a delay message, but that's not a, a, a common function that we do um, within our operation. So we didn't know about that. We were getting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, miscommunication between Toulouse Tower and Airbus and what was needed to do. And it's a little bit of a language barrier and a bunch of different things. But so ultimately, the aircraft got off the ground about an hour and 45 minutes late, uh, which is not as bad as what we've seen in the past, but definitely want to try to get off the ground on time so <clears throat> man it sounds like a 12 pack is needed i already got some cold ones in the fridge that are cold i'm starting with a nice black rifle coffee chocolate flavor got a water over here but once the coffee is done because it is morning time here in toulouse uh not in real life we i have like manually dialed the time to be nine o'clock in the morning because it's late late o'clock at night <laughs> Um, yeah, so after some coffee, then we're going to be going to the beverage fridge and going to be getting a couple IPAs. Hashim, what's up, man? Long time, no talk. Haven't seen your name in the chat for a hot while. How are things going? I'm sure you've been on all kinds of adventures. <laughs> all right, so <clears throat> let's jump to it. Uh, let's get connected to Vatsim. I am deathly afraid of being on Vatsim in Europe. But it is the 500 sub special edition, right? So we got to go all out. All right, so we are connected. <laughs> you know, tell me what to do, Rio. <laughs> all right, and so uh, we are also going to be rolling with the two camera setup today. Got the throttle and the McDo over here. Probably won't use the McDo a whole lot because, as y'all know from previous uh, streams, it doesn't work the best. So. I'll use it a little bit, but it's kind of meh. All right, so let's jump into the airplane. Let's get this long flight started. We've got three and a half hours from wheels up to wheels down. Going to be departing on the LeCou 5H, LeCou transition, and then a whole bunch of other jibbity jabbity throughout Europe and stuff. And then going to be arriving on the Azron 1H, which is specific to Runway 28 in Kepovic. Because they have four separate arrivals for four separate runways we don't do that here in the states we have one arrival sometimes two depending on direction of landing but other than that we don't do that mess that's it's way too overkill if you ask me but i don't know i don't have a whole lot of experience flying in europe maybe they maybe how they do things is better i'll judge that the more we get into this <clears throat> Oh, and it's just started raining. Nice. Let's try to get out of here pretty quick. Man, it's crazy how hard uh, the frame rates get hit when it starts streaming. turned up a little bit y'all let me know how the sounds 
sound to y'all. So we are going to be taking a full tank of gas on this flight, departing with 42,200 pounds of gas, which is what we uh, do in real life. Should be enough gas to uh, do plenty of gas to get us to Kefalvik, and then from there we'd have to get more gas to continue on to Detroit. Let's check this camera here. I think I bumped it while I was cleaning the other day. Had a new route recently open to Istanbul. Got sent there a couple of times, then a base to Paris via Barcelona, and then back. Have two days off on Mark Rest. And catch nice! Well, that's pretty cool. A lot of fun flying around. <clears throat> and actually, I'm glad that you're here on this one because we are flying in Europe today, and I know jack shit about Euro control for the most part. So, uh, my counterpart with these delivery flights has been kind of doing the heavy lifting as far as dealing with Euro control, getting routes approved, and that kind of stuff. Um, she's kind of set the foundation, and then for future international delivery flights, I just do the admin stuff, uh, the routes and stuff shouldn't change a whole lot, so I shouldn't have to do a whole lot of changes, um, because this is like her main project, and then my main project coming up is going to be, um, implementing RMP AR approaches, um, as well as like LPV approaches, uh, into our op specs and our pilots tool bag of approaches that they're able to conduct uh, so since that's going to be my main um my main project with international deliveries being my secondary uh for her international is going to be her primary good ass coffee <clears throat> is anyone allowed to jump seat these flights or jump seat claim by maintenance? Um, so, in all honesty, like, I don't know the exact process because it's this is very different from a typical, like even just a normal like, repo. Um, because it's an international delivery flight, there's a lot of custom stuff that's involved. Um, like the airplane has to go through customs, the pilots have to go through customs. Um, and the, the maintenance control inspector uh, also obviously has to go through customs. Um, so to be allowed on this flight, it's going to be, I'm sure, a few different layers of approval processes throughout the company. Um, at some point, I am supposed to come to Toulouse and fly on one of these back just so that I can see what the process is like. So um, I'm kind of hoping, because we're taking our first 321neo in April, I would like to be on that one. Uh, either that one or our 200th airplane. You know, something of significance would be kind of cool. Um, so I don't exactly know. Uh, I know it starts with my boss coming up to me and being like, hey, do you want to go to Toulouse and fly on an international delivery flight? I'm like, sure. So <clears throat> um, I don't know exactly what they do because I don't That's think the airplane start. comes. The airplane does not come with seats installed. So, like, when I go over there to fly, um, I don't know how that's going to work because it's going to be two chief pilots and maintenance control inspector. There's only three. There's obviously left seat, right seat, and jump seat. So I don't know how it's going to work for me. Maybe they install some temporary seat. I don't know. But figure it out when that time comes and that, that privilege comes. I heard from a friend that Phoenix got new engine sounds. Old ones weren't that great from what I remember. Delivery flights are always special. Uh, yeah, they're a little bit different. They're a little bit toned down. Um, I've only flown a couple flights with the new sounds. The wind noise also isn't as loud. Um, but yeah, I'll crank them up for you on departure so uh, you can decide for yourself. I, don't, I, I will be. I don't know when. Um, I got an itch on my back. I can't get it. But uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's already been talked about that 
Like they, even the chief pilot on one of our calls one day was like, I want y'all to fly on one or two of these flights. Y'all understand like how long of a day it is for us and blah, blah, blah. Um, really just to, just to reiterate like, hey, make sure everything is good to go because we don't want to have to sit in this airplane any longer. All right, let's get this thing started. We got plenty of time to talk in route on this flight. Again, it is a three and a half hour long flight. status and nav data is good from the 6th of October to the 2nd of November so we're getting ready to go through another nav data cycle uh, so for all of y'all simmers make sure you update your nav data on the 3rd of November that's when the new cycle is going to be coming out and we'll initialize <clears throat> I guess I should finish up the preliminary setup stuff. Well, that's good. All right, so today for customs regulations, call sign has to be the tail number of the aircraft. So November 966, November Kilo. Cost index for flying 50. And we're going to fly 38,000 feet. Uh, and our temperature is minus 58. Triple pause, we're looking at 36.8. Get a wind request. Bum, 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 bum. Well, let's do that. Come down here to this. Get that pulled up. So whenever stuff pops up, I can immediately get rid of it. All right, out of Toulouse, we are departing off runway one four right. And cross check my charts. Make sure it's like a decent runway. It is cool. Let's take one four right, and we are on. The Laku 5H, I guess that's how you say that. See, so you got all these separate departures for specific runways and stuff. It's just, it's too much. I feel like the US is a bit more simplified. But then again, I guess it really just comes down to, to what you know. And so, like, you know, Hashim, you're probably more used to the structure of how. Sits and stars are in Europe versus the states. Um, that's one thing you know, I've been learning through this process. Like for example, having four separate arrivals for four separate runways in Kepovic is a bit much. Like in the states, we would just have one arrival that would probably link up with two, if not all, the runways. Um, it is just to me, it seems a little more simplified. But anyways, we are going to be landing on. Runway 28. So, side note, guys, whenever I'm programming McDo, do y'all prefer to do something like this where you can see the OFP? I can, you know, get the camera down a little bit lower. Or do y'all care less and uh, not do that? Y'all let me know in the comments or chat, whatever. Um, let's see, we got Isla Zulu or Yankee. Which one do I want? Ooh, looks pretty nice. Yeah, let's do let's do Zulu. Do not have it. Oh, there it is. So sweet. And we're gonna be on the Azra 1H, which I guess doesn't have any special transitions. It'll just be Azra. Approach vias. Do we care about approach via? <coughs> Dova. We'll 
we'll start with Adobe for now. We might switch it over to Olgas. Cool. Secondary, copy active. And we're just going to set up some BS uh, engine out procedure. So we'll go to Laku. Rad nav. We've got the Toulouse. We'll hard tune that. And then in the init page, we'll go to the init B page. And we are planning taxi fuel of 500 pounds. Hmm, how do we do? Stay my guys. I'm gonna actually look at a real release. I don't know if I can show this, I'm not going to. Um uh, okay, so the reserve is ten percent, not yeah. Obviously we're not flying in the state, so it would be the forty five minutes for the US FARs. It's ten percent about 1500 pounds based off of this other flight plan so that's what we'll do I wonder if we'll do is this what route reserve is try that we'll see what it does uh let's see if I don't know And I think this calculates a bit heavier than what the real life does for 2000. All right, plan zero fuel weight. Get all this stuff off the screen. All right, plan zero fuel weight is 97.3. And we'll do a standard CG of 30 for now. Block fuel, 42.2. Trip, oh yeah, we got our alternate as well, which is like two hours away. Uh, if, I think it's Glasgow maybe? EGPF, I'm guessing that's Glasgow. Um, but that will be our alternate per what we do in real life. Um, and that is a burn of 7.7. .7. We still got plenty of fuel after that. So technically, we could fly up to Keflavik, hold for almost three hours, and then turn around and fly two hours and one minute back to our alternate to land. It's a lot of gas. All right, so that is set up. We'll leave that page up for now. And let's see where we're at in the boarding process. Which we're not, obviously we're not boarding, but we are taking on a lot of gas. And we've got our fuel. So in that regard, we are ready. Now let's take a look at the SID and see if uh, we can figure out what our transition altitude is. Because I know <clears throat> Europe does things very different when it comes to transition altitudes. Uh, in the States, it's an e even 18,000 no matter where you're at, where you go, what you do. Europe is different. So, I want to find something that tells me transition altitudes. Transition altitude, 5,000 feet. That's really weird, but in a way it makes sense. And we'll throw the constraints on. Coolio. So we figured out the transition thing, so that's a good start to life. Now, <clears throat> let's get this uh, EFB plugged in. Had the aircraft all set up for the overnight after they did some test flights yesterday, which is pretty typical. So as of right now, uh, winds are variable at three knots, nine, 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 quad nine on the viz. 
Hugh at 700 feet, broken 10,000 feet, broken 12,000 feet, temperature 21, dew point 15, altimeter is 10, 16. Uh, what? They got a tempo and a METAR? I don't think I've ever seen that. Interesting. Um, so, switch this over. And it was 10, 16. Shit. And see now we're just about ready. Let's get that APU fired up. <coughs> no nose diving this time. <laughs> I just saw that. Yeah, we're gonna try our best. <coughs> They should, hell no, <laughs> Jeff. They should just send you to Mobile. And in fact, it's actually BFM, sir. It's not MOB. Uh, it's Mobile Downtown. Get it right. But I actually was uh, putting MOB for a while. <laughs> Bring your own seat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Of course, now I gotta work. Uh, I, before I got on here, I, I checked to make sure I wasn't gonna have any meetings to. Uh, get in the way of this. Karen, what's up, dude? Welcome aboard. Welcome to Toulouse, France. Getting ready to head over to Keflavik, Iceland. Pretty excited about flying into Iceland. Oh, Avgate, what's up, dude? Welcome aboard. So, being that I don't know much about um, Euro Control, uh, if y'all see me do or say something that is um, that you know for 100% fact is not right in regards to Euro control and how Europe does things. Please let me know because um, it is great knowledge for me to have. And now, essentially, somewhat dispatching flights from Europe. Okie dokie. Start getting the radio ready to go. In fact, we're going to go off of COM2 because we sit in the right seat, you know. Our phone is on. Cool. Maybe whenever I get on the radios, I should say Bonjourno. Actually, that's Italian, right? Bonjour. Just kidding. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna let everybody hear this. Um, let everybody hear this uh, country American accent. All right, so we've got our final numbers. Zero fuel weight's 97.5, so just a tad bit higher than planned. With a zero fuel weight CG of 23.6. All right, now let's run our takeoff numbers. Betcha, I can make this where y'all can see it. Yep. All right, so we're gonna run off. Uh, we're taking off one four right. It is wet, and we'll keep Togo off for now. We'll do packs on. Uh, temperature outside is 21 degrees. We'll confirm that. 17 degrees. Why does this say 21? It's quite a bit warmer. But nonetheless, it is not icing conditions. So, and for those of y'all who don't know, icing conditions is any visible moisture with temperature of 10 degrees Celsius or less. Um, or obviously frozen precipitation. So we'll go PAX on, any ice off, no toga. And throw the weather in there. Uh, it's calling for 3003, which should be 1016. Alrighty, so oof, it's giving us a flaps 3 takeoff. 
If we do a flaps two, can we get off the ground? Looks like we can. So we got flaps two up 1.6, flex temp 68, engine out 1490. We'll just round that up to 1500 for fun, ease of life. Uh, transition altitude is going to be 5,000. So sweet. Okay. So now we'll go to perf. I'm going to do flaps two up 1.6. It's quite a bit of more trim than normal than we usually see. 68 on the flex. 1500. 1500. It already knows the transition altitude. Nice. 138, 138, 141. Cool. And we'll start getting those stairs pulled off. We just hit our three minutes for the APU warm up. Turn the bleed on. Turn on power. I guess those stairs had already pulled away. So let's get rid of them again. Y'all right, get out of here. We're trying to get gone. <coughs> Jim! What's up, dude? Welcome aboard to this international delivery flight. Delivering November 966, November Kilo. This is what we're pretending. Again, good friend of mine, Mike V, that y'all probably see on FlightSim.to. Uh, he uh, was kind enough to paint me an amazing livery. And we're actually, got, I got some screenshots. We'll take, some, take a look at it. Um, and he, he did it just for this uh, stream, but I was having issues with the fly-by-wire. So, uh, took the the safer option to take the uh, Phoenix instead of the fly by wire. And Wes, cheers my friend, great to see you, welcome aboard. I'm getting a weird message from YouTube saying not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. So if y'all see buffering or anything like that, let me know. Looking good. Departure time that we need to be up by is 0800. And let's get ready to push. So the cool thing is, being that this is a non revenue flight, you don't have to worry about shutting the cockpit door. So we got 1016, 5000. All right. Let's run through uh, departure brief real quick. This guy's probably going to be really annoying. So while. Uh, actually, yeah, I think I can turn him off. Or y'all can't hear him, anyways. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> it's an international delivery flight. So it's going to be uh, kind of a, a Part 91 type repo, not super standard to airline type stuff. Uh, it's going to be right seat takeoff. Aircraft types at 320 for tail strike avoidance. Uh, we want to phase to the north. 
Um, <clears throat> there's no MELs or CDLs. It's a brand new airplane from the factory, so it better not be. It's going to be a two-engine taxi. Taxi route we're looking uh, is going to be pretty quick. Uh, we'll probably do most of our items before we even start the taxi roll. Uh, we're going to take uh, Sierra 90 to, uh, I guess that's South 90 to West 90. I don't know how they said this stuff over here. Over to Mike 11 and uh, depart off runway 14, right? We have no uh, runways or hotspots to cross. Trains, no factor. Uh, weather uh, is a little bit of a factor. We've got some uh, rain showers in the vicinity. Uh, if we needed to come back, could reduce uh, visibility. Uh, if we need to abort, would be my decision to reject takeoff. Come please stop. Set the parking brakes. Call the flight attendants to their stations. We'll analyze the situation. Actually, there is no flight attendant, so it's just us. Um, we'll analyze the situation and uh, call for any cam action emergency evacuation checklist as required. Uh, after V1, our uh, our engine out is to go hold at Lacou, and we're going to speed up, clean up, and engine out. It's 1,500 feet off the ground. Um, we will be. Let's see, landing weight. We're well below max landing weight for them to come back. And if all goes as planned, we're going to fly the Lacou uh, 5 or the Lacou 1H, whatever the hell it's called. Lacou, no, that's 5A. Yeah, 5H. Okay. The Lacou 5A, top altitude is 5,000 feet. 5,000 is blue. And uh, we're squawking 2,000 for now in uncontrolled airspace. B4 start checklist. Maintenance log and tail is on board and check. Copper pup is complete. Gear pins covers are removed. Signs are on and auto. ADRs are in nav. We'll double check that real quick. Let's go to data. IRS monitor. We've got three greens. We'll go data again. Just do GPS monitor real quick. Cool. What does this say? Cool. Anyways, uh, back to perf. Except this turn, make sure there's no more. There is not. Cool. And I want the flight plan on that one. All right. <clears throat> um, altimeters 1016 is set. EFBs checked. Windows, doors, and slides are closed and armed, as we can see on the lower ECAM there. Beacon is on. Thrust levers are in idle. Parking brake is on. Transponder is in auto. Now. Before start checklist is complete. All right, let's turn their dumb voices back on. Oh, but we still got yep, that. Locking gear. Had the um, chalk still in. All right, get my seat right. Gonna lock my wheels. And then get that lean back. That's right. Man. I have learned that to literally adjust my seat like a real pilot seat and everything gets um, way more comfortable. Uh, get back from the store. Nice. Just in time. Alright, start the block. Hopefully nobody's taxiing around us. or Toulouse traffic November 966 November Kilo is uh, 320 we're pushing back from Apron Ziegler Toulouse I don't really know what to say for this particular ramp alright let's fire them up let's get that secondary camera on 
We got more than 25 PSI on the bleed air, so we're good to start number one. So another thing that I did in uh, in addition to building this box thing uh, for the throttle is I also built um, something similar for my rotor pedals to elevate the pedals and uh, get them up into a more comfortable position. Uh, if you ever look at Airbus pilots, um, you know their their feet like aren't like more down on the ground they're kind of up and elevated so their legs are kind of like when someone's like if you're driving a vehicle you know your your feet are a little bit higher up than like if you were sitting in a computer chair uh, so I built and painted a box and whatnot just like uh, the throttle box to uh, make it look nice and feel accurate so I'm not, not sure if y'all can even see it but We'll look at it later. It's nothing too crazy. Left is clear, right is clear. Well, thank you. Alright, let's roll number two. The only thing I wish I could do is keep this chair from rotating. Can I do that? Don't know. Well, thank you, Monsieur. Au revoir. Hope everybody is having a great start to their week. Today is my last day off. Of the last uh, my four day rotation, I'll be going back to work tomorrow, and I will actually uh, be kicking off the whole process for this exact flight that we um, are simulating right now. I'll be shooting off several uh, emails to get get the ball rolling. We got a good start on number two. Run the clock for three minute engine warm up. After start flow. And now this is where, let's see our actual, trims 21.3. So, for those of y'all who don't know, uh, pilots actually don't look at the whole like up 1.6. Uh, they pay more attention to the CG. So our tow CG is 21.3, so that's where it would rotate it to 21 should be somewhere about there so now let's see how that looks on that's 1.5 there's 1.6 perfect okay <clears throat> let's see all right let's recap what I just did boom 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 trim so next is TA 200 taxi APU can come off after start checklist, engine anti-ice is off, yellow trim is off, red trim is zero. After start checklist is complete. All right, so from now, we're just gonna do most of our items here because it's a very short taxi. So next, we're gonna do brake check. So we're looking down here at the accumulator, we're looking for pressure zero. Brake check, pressure is zero. Cool. All right, mini brief. We're departing off of runway one for right on the Lacou Five Hotel departure. Um, our gross weight is 139.6. Flap config is two. Fuel on board 42 even. Uh, V1 is 138. V2 is 141. We're flexing 68. Top altitude is 5,000 feet. 5,000 is blue, and our first fix is. Uh, to loose. 
T O U V O uh, V O R. You have to actually fly back to the VR. That's dumb. Okay. Mini briefs complete. Flight controls check. Full up. Full down. Full left. Full right. Full left. And full right. Then the other pilot would do theirs silently. Sweet. After or before takeoff flip. Cool. And there's our three minutes. It's good timing. Toulouse traffic. November 966, November Kilo. It's taxing from the Ziegler Apron to runway 14 right via South 90. West 90. Toulouse. I have no idea. This boy, they number their taxiways are kind of weird. Well, I appreciate that, Robert. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, yeah, so the the throttle, the throttle, so these are two separate parts, actually. Uh, this is, both of these are from Flight Sim PM. Uh, runs at about, here, plus shipping to the States, it's about 1300 or so for both. Um, mostly functions just like the real thing. Uh, there's a, a little bit of functionality that's missing, but it's nothing super crazy. Uh, you just can't raise the um, spoiler lever to arm, um, although there is a push button. So if you hit the lever, it will arm. You can, like, set your toggle to uh, to that, so you can arm disarm that way. So it's still somewhat realistic. And then also the, the parking brake um, doesn't lift and twist. It just twists. But it is a uh, one-for-one. True to scale to the real Airbus, and I love it. The McDo came from Java Simulator in um, Taiwan. Um, it feels great. It, it's built great. Like, really nice, snappy buttons. Um, but my problem is, when I hit a button, the sim doesn't always read it. Um, so therefore, I've kind of gotten to the point where I have it, and I'll use it for a few things, but I don't. I'm clicking inside the virtual cockpit for the most part, because uh, even just now I hit a button and it didn't even read it. It's a little annoying. Flight time on this flight is uh, three hours and 25 minutes. Well, that might be a little bit different because I calculated this flight plan about two hours ago. Whiskey 100, Sierra 11. Okay. So there's Whiskey 100. I guess West 100. So I don't know if they'd call it Whiskey or West. I don't know what they would do. All right. B4 takeoff checklist. Uh, to the line. Gross weight comparison is complete. Pitch trim is... What was it? This trim is 21.3% CG set, V1, VR, V2, flex, and got 138, 138, 141, flex, 68, flaps config 2. Flight instruments are checked, flight controls are checked, ECMMO, takeoff, all green, ECMMO status is checked, Distance wisher is auto, on auto, TCAS, code set, TAR, cabin crew is advised, and mini brief is complete before takeoff checklist to the line is complete. Alright, here we got, now we are on Sierra 11. Kind of weird how they changed the taxiways. And we'll hold her short right here. 
Alrighty. Before takeoff checklist, blow the line. Takeoff runway. Runway 14 right is confirmed. Fuel, <laughs> our men fuel, is 25.3. And we've got 41.9 on board. Engine mode selector is normal. Bleed packs are set before takeoff checklist. Blood line is complete. What just happened? Huh. Other thing fell. Oh well. Alrighty. <clears throat> Let's get to it. So there's traffic. November 966, November Kilo. Departing off runway 14 right. Gonna be exiting the airspace to the northwest. Toulouse. All right, let's crank those sounds up so that Hashim can see if he Hashim can see if he uh, likes the new sounds or not. All right, guys, here we go. Man flex, that's right, my author's blue. Traffic November 966 November Kilo is clear of runway 14 right exiting the airspace to the northwest. Toulouse. Alrighty. Got pause train on the airspeed. Thrust climb, climb. air temperature in about five degrees I'm gonna have to uh, turn on that engine any ice all right flaps one speed checks flaps one thousand to go flap zero speed checks flap zero after take off checklist Landing gears up, flaps retracted bleed packs are set. APU's off after takeoff checklist is Speed Alt Star.
hit the slash button, which did that. All right, let's go standard. Standard, standard. Then we'll keep it going up to, let's say, for now. So there's no more constraints. No more constraints, so we can go open climb. <coughs> Thrust climb, open climb. 20 blue, 20 blue. Let's check that temperature. It is 10 degrees Celsius. And now I'll get that chair back readjusted to where I like it. And I can see the dog over here. It's Bella. Sweetest dog in the world. Looks like most of ATC has gotten off. May not have much uh, ATC here later on. And there's 10,000. Kill the lights. No need to ring the, the flight attendant bell because there are no flight attendants on this airplane. It is a delivery flight. See, to me, it would be really cool to go and visit, like, a small French town like that, like this little town here, instead of going to, like, Paris or some big city. I think it would be way, way cooler to um, go somewhere not touristy. It's crazy the amount, like look at this, all these different centers that are on. That's wild compared to the states, which they're all well to the east of us, or yeah, east of us. I don't know if it's my phone or what, but lots of static coming through. Turn that down. I think the this, this static you're hearing is um, probably the wind noise. I have that one off. Windshield wind, that's off. Wind ambience is off. Maybe it's the wind noise you're hearing? Hopefully, hope it's not static. Hearing it too, that's not good. <laughs> Brand new bird, damn right. Yeah, I'm, I really hope to uh, get to ride on one of these one day. Although, it's a lot of flying, and I don't like sitting on an airplane that damn long, but... You know, it's a rare opportunity 
that a lot of people don't get to um, a lot of people don't get to do so should do it I went to sleep Sunday at 11 in the afternoon and woke up at 2 a.m. damn son that's a lot of damn sleep What could be the static? I'm about to break out. I guess not. What if we do? Let's try this. I wonder if the static's coming from my microphone. How about that? Y'all let me know. I just turned FS Realistic off. Like the sound down. So let me know if y'all. If it sounds like it went away. The mattress sleeps like a dream. I'm afraid of oversleeping. But yeah, I would too. Don't go doing that. Don't want to lose your job. Hey, how did um, how did your interview with Southwest go? It's a weird looking uh, cloud base as ahead of us. There's 20,000. We'll take it up to our final of 38. Still here. Okay. Um... So it's not that. I think maybe it's something on the microphone. Because when I stop talking, I hear, I, I see it moving, although it shouldn't be. So let's, let's dip into that. Alright, so maybe it's not the mic. I was really hoping it was. So if I turn off, if I turn Microsoft Flight Simulator down, do y'all hear it now? So it's something to do with the flight sim. Yeah, yeah. So I turned the flight sim's audio down and then started music. Mm. 
know if there's anywhere to adjust anything with audio. No, it's not this because I turned this off. Alright, let me listen to the stream on my phone and see if I can't hear it with y'all and try to pinpoint what it is.
All right, yeah, I hear what y'all are talking about. <clears throat> it's definitely noticeable and annoying. So for the time being, we'll uh, we'll leave the Sam sound off. Let's try one thing. Alright, y'all let me know how it how it is now. I'm going to turn the music off. So it did look like a weird little setting was in there. Like it was using a... It was like... Because I guess the sim is updated or something. It had a different like... Sim version name okay I guess that's what it was it was something like that interesting really weird interesting okay well we figured it out that works we're finally getting on top of this stuff there's over some rain showers right now We got a quite a ways to go. All the way up through France and the UK. Cross off the northern coast of the UK and into Iceland. Who's, who the heck smashed the potatoes on the windscreen? <laughs> I don't know, but I honestly don't mind it. At least for a little while, right? Like, through the climb out, I don't mind a little IMC. Um, always looking for that awesome breakout. We're already 35 minutes into the flight. So we should have uh, just a little less than three hours. I want to hear some like French. Or I want I want to hear some accents on the radios. Uh, I would imagine as we get into the UK, we'll start hearing some hearing some Brits. Always jet. When we get to cruise, we will, uh, when we get to cruise, I'm going to go grab another coffee, and I'll go brew another cup of coffee. Then we'll do our hat flow, our initial hat flow, and um, kind of get the McDo set up, you know, everything prepped for the arrival, uh, and then we'll change that uh, as the hours pass, and we'll do some fuel checks as well, just kind of see how our fuel burns are going. It looks like we're we've topped all of it. Let's get that engine and ice off, and that should give us a little more engine performance. Let's see if we see this uh, climb rate change at all. I would doubt it's not that big of a performance increase. Nah. So, currently in Keflavik, winds are win uh, winds are 150 at 14, 2,000 uh, meters on the visibility, light drizzle, mist, overcast 300, temperature 6, dew point 6. 
on uh, Q and H is uh, zero nine seven nine. So we might actually have us a nice low IFR approach when we get there. That'd be cool. Shot one last night into uh, Atlanta. Well, this morning actually at like one in the morning. Not thousand to go. Um, went into Atlanta and it was half mile broken at 300 some uh, light rain mist um, it was definitely a low visibility approach it was a lot of fun I would join you but zero clue where to take off and I've never flown Europe Vatican yeah no, I feel you, dude. Do not worry. I totally understand. All right, let me go uh, grab another cup of coffee. Uh, so other things we're going to do during the flight. <clears throat> um, take a look at the November 966 uh, November Kilo livery that my buddy painted. Um, we got Mock Alt Star. And uh, also, I got some good screenshots from the approach last night into Atlanta. We'll take a, some looks at, looks at that. And then uh, whatever the hell else is thrown our way. But I'm going to be right back. Give me just a quick sec. Once I remember which... Boop.
All right, we're back. Nice, fresh, hot cup of coffee. <clears throat> Keeping it nice and cold in the house today for this um, computer that wants to spit out a bunch of hot ass air and make the room nice and hot. And also, I'm gonna do a little some song. Let's see. Let's do this. I want this copy. And then we're gonna go to Valanta. We're gonna paste this there. And then we'll move this up here. So now we got the Bella cam or the dog bed cam because you never know which dogs will be laying on it. And you can totally expect that in about maybe an hour, hour and a half, uh, I'm going to have some real hungry dogs swarming all around me um, trying to uh, get some food. I might need to go get the other dog bed because i got the other little one, the little mutt laying behind me. Looks like we're getting ready to cross relics and see what our, uh, what Simbrief says at relics. So at Ralex, we're supposed to have 37,656 pounds of fuel. And we are seven miles from Ralex. 37. So right now we are at 37.4. So we're overburning just a little bit. About 200 pounds thus far. <coughs> Interesting landscape down there. iPads getting there on the lower end of the battery spectrum. So get it plugged in. Let's see. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start getting things prepped up real quick. Um, I like to start doing a half flow pretty early in the flight. That way, nothing ever surprises me, and I'm already, you know, thinking about the um, the arrival. What the hell is this? Oh, open enrollment. Um, so let's uh, let's do that. So using my McDo, we'll pan the camera back over here real quick. So using the McDo, and you'll be able to see um, what I'm doing as I type or try to type because it's not going to read a lot of button inputs. So <clears throat> we're going to do the hat flow. The hat flow, when you draw it out, makes a little hat. For those of you who've been on the channel for a little while, you've seen me do this before. Um, but it makes a little hat. So we're going to start with the uh, flight plan. And we're going to go to fix info. We're going to put in Keflavik to so B. Uh, K 
KF. And we want runway to 8. Drop that in there. And we're going to do a 5 mile radius. Or 5 mile range ring around the airport. Next one. Tab over. I'm going to look at uh, see what the last fix on the approach is. Which is Ardal. A R D A L. And we want the opposite of runway heading to draw the center line. So we're going to go uh, 104 degrees. Cool. And let's see. So next we're going to go to Radnav and we'll clear out Toulouse. I'm not sure if Catholic does have KFV. K, F, and where you at? B. Put that in one. Prog page. Again, B I K F. Uh, runway two eight. We got that in. We have. 1,215 miles to go until we're at the threshold of the uh, of the runway. Perf page, and we'll enter in the current METAR, which is let's refresh. So winds are 160 at 15, 160 slash 15. Temperature. Six, which is less than ten. We do have visible moisture, so it's also going to be icing condition. So we'll have to have engine anti ice on on uh, on landing. And the Q and H is zero nine seven nine. That is the. Come on now. Jesus. Think my dude just like crap that on me. Yeah, it's like shit in a brick. All right, let's try this again. Perf. It's like really slow at reading the inputs or something. So we're gonna kill this. Reconnect. All right, perf. Q and H zero nine seven nine. See how much of a pain in the ass it was just to enter that. All right, minimums for the uh, Isla Zulu. Two hundred. Foot ceilings and RVR 550 meters. RVR 750 meters when a flight director or autopilot HUD is not used. And we have flight director, so 550 will be the visibility minimums. But for the purpose of entering this, all we care about is the 200 feet off the ground. So this is a standard Cat 1. All right, so that is all set. <clears throat> Fuel prediction page. Estimating to land with 23,500 pounds of gas. So uh, that's going to give us roughly three hours and seven minutes of extra fuel. So if we needed to, we could hold for three hours and seven minutes and then divert to Glasgow, um, which is still two hours away, and land at our reserve. So looking good there. Secondary flight plan, and let's delete secondary. And for now, I'm just going to leave this empty. 
later on we'll come back and we'll reassess the winds uh, see if the visibility is really taking a shit if it is we might need to look and see if we've got any additional approaches into Kefalvik like a Cat 2, Cat 3 um, so we can explore those options a little bit later on as the weather progresses Back over to the Bella Cam. She's like right where the, the fans blowing the air in, so she's nice and comfortable. Still no controlled airspace that we're gonna have to go through yet. I'm sure that will change just so that I'll end up having a hard time and mess up on stream. We do have some areas of weather out ahead of us too. Oh, that could. No, I guess that's not frozen precip. Open enrollment. How much did the company actually try to find a good deal? Who knows? I don't know. I'm not even changing any of my stuff. I'd be contact support. Yeah, and that's the thing is like, there's not really support for these guys. Like, it's very bare basic like I don't know how to explain it so we go to their website like I've, I've read online that people like weren't happy with their products sent it back and never got money back um, so let's see if we can find it's like already at the top like there's no support homepage who are we downloads well, they like to post pictures of like shipping stuff because they were taking so long I guess people were thinking that they weren't actually sending anything um, about us latest tags newsletter nowhere anywhere for support only just um, Facebook messaging, which uh, has gotten me nowhere. Um, during like when I was trying to figure out like what was going on with my order, um, I was getting no responses. Also, though, it's partly a me thing, but I don't have Facebook, um, so it's hard for me to send them messages. I tried to restart my old. Um, Facebook page or whatever and like even that was a challenge so I just said screw it um, so I'm just kind of hoping that maybe at some point they can update the software make the software better Let's see Phoenix some update 10 so this was released on September 25th because they do their dates backwards <coughs> compared to us also recently found out JS Connect what is in bug fix. I wonder. Oh, okay, that's yeah, it's older than this. I wouldn't do anything. I got 3.2.0 installed. Um, but I partially think it's it might be a Phoenix thing more than actually the McDo itself. Um, because often, like, I'll type into the McDo and I can hear the button press in the McDo in the airplane, but yet nothing pops up on, on either McDo as far as, like, anything popping up in the scratch pad. Um, so I kind of think maybe it could be a Phoenix thing. I was trying to cross-check with the fly-by-wire, but apparently having both, um, both pieces of software installed for both airplanes, like, cancels them out. I had to go uninstall the fly-by-wire one to get this one to work for today. So, not great in that regard either. <clears throat> so, I don't know if it's just Phoenix or what, but there are, I will hear, like, I'll hit the button on the physical McDo. I can hear the button press in the virtual McDo, but I won't see anything pop up in the scratch pad. It makes me think it could actually be a Phoenix thing. 
Angeles. So, uh, show off just a little bit of um, the awesome work uh, my buddy did, Mike. There's a lot of liveries on FlightSim.to. I would argue that I bet you you probably, if you fly in the United States, you probably have at least three or four or five of his liveries installed. But um, for now, let's go to... Yes, we'll just kind of blow this up. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just a, the standard fly-by-wire spirit livery, but we've got the November 966 November Kilo. And again, this is going to be my first um, mostly solo international delivery flight to process and, and uh, dispatch myself. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see the tail number that I'm seeing a lot of these emails and I'm talking about with Airbus. Seeing it in the sim. So November 966, November Kilo will be my airplane. So I can't wait till the day comes that I actually see this airplane on the line. Even more so, get to fly in the airplane. Because I'll be able to tell the pilots, like, hey, I helped deliver this airplane. This is my plane. So it's pretty cool. I see FlyBoWire also started, uh, they added the modeling of the SATCOM. It's pretty neat. I wish uh, we could get that on the CO or the Phoenix but um but yeah so I took a bunch of pictures a bunch of screenshots this morning to make the thumbnail I was trying to get creative doing some factory delivery type stuff so this was in Toulouse airplane parked in the hangar and then outside the uh, Airbus signed hangar or at least one of them And this is very accurate. Spirit does the uh, fin number system. Um, so all the NEOs start with a four. And then the last or the digits of the tail numbers are 4966. And then parked it into a different hangar. Just taking a few shots butthole shots so then <clears throat> decided to do a quick little um, pilot's life flight uh, which I now currently work for Delta Airlines in a pilot's life um, already thinking about going back to spirit because um, I also want to build my time with V spirit so I ended up I end up flying the, like a yellow airplane because V Spirit can read what your airplane is, and if I flew a Delta plane, it would know and it wouldn't count my flight. Uh, but then I just logged the time as well with um, a pilot's life as Delta. So we're flying Orlando into Atlanta early this morning with a half mile visibility, low ceilings, some rain and drizzle. And at this point, we are on a five mile final, runway uh, one zero. And as we get close. So initially, you, know, you can barely start to make out those approach lights. As we get closer, can't see them no more. And then it starts raining on me. Cut the windshield wipers on, and then bam. 290 feet off the ground. Pick up those uh, approach lights again. And that was it. On the screenshots, but... um. Yeah, it was a, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, when I was like close to the ground, I was actually kind of like the the viz was so low, and I could, could couldn't see very far out in front of me to the point that almost couldn't tell if my wings were level or not. I think I touched down like a negative 145 feet per minute, something like that. But uh, disconnected autopilot right at 200 feet. Had the men's set to uh, 100 for a Cat 2 ILS. Got on the ground safely. Some pretty scenery there. That's across the English Channel. Which is cool because I don't think I've ever really crossed the English Channel um, in the sim. And just to think about the history of the English Channel, like World War II with D Day and all that kind of stuff, it's just it's really, really cool. 
I would rather see it in person though. That'd be that'll be the day. I just need to figure out where the hell uh, Normandy is because I don't know. Where's Normandy? Oh, it would actually be kind of sad to fly over Normandy and like not be able to stop. Like I would love to go to Utah Beach. Yeah, I don't know where it's at. Josh, what's up, dude? Welcome aboard. We are currently operating November 966 November Kilo flight, which actually, at the airline, uh, the flight number is NKS uh, 9966. Um, but for the purpose of um, for the purpose of customs, uh, customs regulations say that uh, for a, an aircraft delivery like this, the call sign has to be the tail number or the, the registration number. Um, so we are, our call sign is November 966 November Kilo, but our actual flight number at the company would be NKS 9966. But uh, anyways, we are delivering this aircraft from uh, Toulouse over to... Uh, or to lose to Keflavik. And then at a later date, we're going to fly the second half, which is Keflavik to Detroit, which is quite a bit further. And why am I being pinged? Did center just come online? Yep. 29, 29. Alright, now it's about to get spicy, y'all. I don't know. I don't know these center's names. 29... 42. This thing ain't hurt nobody. Hello, center, November 966, November kilos with you, flight level 380, 17 miles south of Garmy. Twenty nine, four twenty five, that's what I'm on. Oh, I guess I'm not technically in his airspace yet. Oh, we'll contact them. Basics? No. Garmy is when we cross into his airspace. Why am I not hearing anybody else? <laughs> Damn right it does. <laughs> push talk, push talk set, audio, void wireless gaming. <clears throat> Why is this not picking up? My voice.
Test, test. What? It's not. Cycle these. Hello, centers. Uh, November 966, November Kilo with you, flight level 38014 miles south of Vasix. Seven four four zero, November nine six six, November Kilo. How do y'all hear ATC? Are they sound, are they loud enough? Direct Welland for number 966 number of Kilo. Direct well in. Alright. this properties there we go uh, that was at 2904 is that 2904 route direct QNAV, QNAV 1 Golf Arrival to Gatwick? QNAV 1 Golf Arrival for Gatwick with that 2904. Jay! What's up, man? Mr. Ryan EQ in the house. Welcome aboard this delivery flight. We are delivering uh, November 966, November uh, Kilo uh, to uh, Kaflovic. And then uh, at a later date, it's going to be Kaflovic to Detroit to its final destination to be processed. And then later put into service. This is also uh, the tail number of my first solo delivery flight that I'm currently working on. So it'll be really cool to uh, see 966 November Kilo go into service one day.
with a 2904 route direct Kunav and when ready descend flight level 160. Direct Kunav and descending flight level 160. I hope everybody is having a great start to uh, to your, well probably most of y'all's work week. What a great start to the week, nonetheless. Happy Halloween! Forgot it's Halloween. <laughs> yeah, Jay, I was flying into Atlanta. Uh, in fact, I was just showing off some pictures of that approach. Not to beat a dead horse, but I'll show them off again. This was final. I know some of the stuff's blocking it, but um, yeah. So we're at 300 feet on the ILS, had in 100 feet for the Cat 2, and uh, two and a half miles. We picked up the. Uh, Approach lights. A lot of fun. See now, I can hear them say Eurowings, and I keep thinking like when I hear wings, because the only call sign that has wings in it in the states is Spirit Wings. So I hear wings, and I'm like, oh, what? Three hundred. So I'm using Wiley's uh, four four K uh, version of this repaint. And there's a few things that are obviously affected after some uh, recent updates. So disregard that. We'll just say it's. Uh, Thank you know, you. some stuff's going to be taken care of when the airplane gets to Detroit. I hate how slow this is. I could change it, but then when I want to move in the cockpit, it'd be too fast. Control zero. Oh, so whenever they hear me talk, I wonder if they're like, "Ah, oh, it's a yank." Um, although I don't sound like a yank. November nine six six November Kilo route direct Tango Lima Alpha. Tango Lima Alpha for six six November Kilo. Tango Lima Alpha. Easy three seven uniform Bravo speed on conversion two seven zero knots or less. On conversion two seven. Tango Lima Alpha. Eight zero six nine descent flight level one two zero route direct timber. Direct timber uh one two zero. Damn, big old shortcut. Correct. I like it. Let's go. Navigation direct Baku climb flight level one eight zero. I'll sorry, repeat that. Uh, Fiber two six nine, please. Fiber two six nine, resume navigation direct Baku. D'accord. Bonjour, la fonte. Tu tiens le bronzion. Bon mot de béton. I think bon mot de béton means uh, trick or treat in uh, French. I learned that in fifth grade. Uh, French. Uh, or second grade, whatever. I took it. Yeah. Bravo, Alpha, Kilo, Uniform, Romeo, Baku. Oh, not. <laughs> Just relaxing. Get ready to take the kids. Ooh, there you go. Uh, trick or treat. Uh, it's our first trick or treat too, right? Check. It's her first time going. That reminds me, I'm gonna go put up a doggy gate between, like, my front porch and the wall so the kids can't get to my front door because I don't have candy. Like, so last year we didn't have candy, we didn't have the the front porch lights on, and parents still let their their damn kids come up and ring the doorbell. The the front porch lights are not on. That's the universal sign that we are not accepting trick or treaters. Piss off. So today I'm gonna to put out a doggy gate so they can't get to my front door, little bastards. Because <laughs> they come over and they hit the doorbell and all my dogs will go ballistic. <clears throat> Blue, what's up, dude? Welcome. 
I still can't get over how cool that throttle quadrant is. I love this thing. Absolutely worth every dollar. Now, with the release of the 40 series, maybe for a lot of people it would be better to have put that money towards a new graphics card. But if not, this thing is freaking awesome. McDo can suck it. But throttle is kick ass. Now, ooh, that reminds me. Um, I saw there was a 4090 on for sale on a place, some website I never heard of. So I was gonna ask my buddy about it first before buying one. But I, I think I'm if I can find a 4090, 2000 or less, I'm gonna pull the trigger on that. Cause it's we're streaming in 1440. Like I need the boost. I need the perf for the. Freaking two times a damn month, and I get to stream now. <coughs> You're a wing five go fuck, so what's your request to cruise level? Keep hearing that wings, it makes my heart stop. He was talking to me. Stock X. Ryan Air, 6 November uniform, just checking the winds across France at the moment. Is it possible we can climb up to flight level 370? Ryan Air, 6 November uniform, yeah, if you fly heading for me at 170 degrees, climb flight level 370. 370. Fly heading 170 degrees. I guess somebody bought the one I was looking at last night. I don't see it no more. Tom Jet 7, Adele tonight, fly heading 155. God, and all these are north of two thousand dollars. EPA zero six nine, contact Gary Director one two six decimal eight two five. Good night. One two six eight two five. Thanks very much. Good night. EPA zero six nine. There's one for twenty three hundred on eBay. November 966, November Kilo, just leaving my airspace now. Monitor Unicom 122 Have a great flight. Over to Unicom. Thanks for all your help today. Have a great one. November 966, November Kilo. Bye. Hey, so it's very mighty nice. And we're back on Unicom. That was fun. It's cool, like, hearing some accents. And we got a message. All right, so we actually now have another controller. He uh, just sent me a message. Um, the next controller just logged on to 127.1. Let's go. Start scrolling too fast and it just accelerates too fast. 27, damn it. One. Uh, Tango Lima Alpha. Uh, 
Hello, center November 966, November Kilo with the flight level 380 direct Tango Lima Alpha. November 966, November Kilo London, thank you, Roger. <laughs> That's cool. Roger? You have a cup of tea. God, this coffee is so good. All right. So, we've done our first hat flow. We'll wait a little while and do another one. Um, we'll take a look at the weather, though. Curious to see if it's de deteriorating. I would expect that it could deteriorate because of the temp dew point spread. Um, so no. It's actually... I mean, the winds will help with obscuration. So... I guess we'll let y'all look at the, uh, at the TAF. I mean the meat's are. 966 November Kilo, just recall me on frequency 127825. 966 remember kilo back with you here on uh, 2782 966 remember kilo thanks um yeah so the weather so <clears throat> previously uh i think winds were just a little bit weaker Yeah, no, winds are stronger actually. Um, it was reduced visibility down to 2,000 meters. Uh, the winds have calmed down by five knots. It was 160 at 15, and it's now 220 at 10. Obviously, as y'all can see, um, <clears throat> we got quad nine on the uh, on the vis. Some low ceilings broken at 400 feet, and then broken at 3,700. Um, did I say 4,000? Broken at 400, broken 3,700, overcast 7,300. Temperature and dew point are both six. So with this, as dispatchers and pilots, the big thing is a temp dew point spread that are on top of each other like this. Uh, and by on top, I mean like there's no spread. Like uh, if the temperature was, I don't know, um, six, but the dew point was like minus 15 or something. Like you have a big spread in the degrees. When you have a temp dew point spread that's really close like this, uh, that's a big indicator of possible obscuration to develop. Um, <clears throat> now, the part that is going to help us with that is control, the winds. With the winds being up to 10 knots, that should help keep any, like, humidity from developing, um, developing obscuration like mist and fog. Um, the, the more calm the winds are and the less disruption there is in the winds, the more that obscuration can develop. Uh, so if we start seeing these winds continue to trend, um, to uh, like weaker winds, um, then we could potentially see some uh, obscuration development. Um, but as of now, with winds at 10 knots, we should be okay. Although I have seen in real life, I have seen some obscuration uh, roll in, or to be like a fog bank that developed elsewhere, and then the winds kind of blew it in. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that. This is a, a, a big thing to pay attention to. As right now, we're totally fine. Uh, minimums for the approach, 200 feet. We've got 400 feet, so we're, we're still good. Yachts. <clears throat> After they go to bed, the daddy taxes will begin. Piece of candy for every 20 minutes I'm out there. That's hilarious. I feel like that's reasonable taxes. If it were me, it would be a piece of candy for every five minutes I'm out there. 
you know, I'm maybe I'm a little greedy. Scholars third, twins, yes, gotcha. Ooh, y'all do reroutes greater than 50 nautical miles? Lateral distance? Yeah. We do 100 miles. So, and I'm glad you brought that up. That's actually a good talking point. So, in the world of dispatch, in that case that uh, I got the shortcut. So, that shortcut to Lima, Tango, Alpha, or whatever it is, that looked like it was a pretty small lateral deviation. Um, although there was a much bigger deviation they gave me earlier um, right through here although I still would bet that's probably not a hundred miles um, but from Himmel to here probably not a hundred miles if it exceeds a hundred miles then for my company's aspects hey there goes somebody down there pretty cool it's probably this guy uh, to continue on your present heading, I want to affect you over the top of the airport. Manchester to Dusseldorf. Oh, okay, all right. So we might see some more people out uh, the right window. A new runway, uh, which is. Uh, yep, there's a guy down there. Yeah, zero for left. You said right. Uh, from the right. There's something uh, flashing on. Uh, EZ seven zero six five and then T two Victor departure four thousand. A lot of people okay, talking. Okay, I think we just the steps on there. Easy six, sorry, Rhino six, four, Charlie Quebec. <laughs> three, Brits one, zero, just sound three, so polite five, zero, five, compared to U.S. folks. Um, uh, heading three, one, so, anyways, <clears throat> so at, as dispatchers, if a pilot zero, six, five, gets a, a shortcut like I did uh, in this Plus area here, seven, zero, six, um, as a dispatcher, I'm going to measure the lateral make, distance. Uh, there you go. Turn this down. Uh, I'm going to measure the lateral difference between the uh, the filed route to like whatever the biggest distance is. If it's over 100 nautical miles laterally, then uh, I have to issue an amendment to the OFP. But apparently for Republic, where J works, it's 50 nautical miles. But then the second reroute that it gave or shortcut, uh, it was didn't seem a whole. It wasn't a whole lot of lateral deviation to it. Um, but for us at my company, um, 100 nautical miles laterally. We'll require an amendment. Um, and then any uh, altitude deviation that is greater than 4,000 feet also requires an amendment. If it's initiated by ATC or dispatch. Same with the shortcuts slash reroutes. If it's initiated by ATC or dispatch, requires an amendment. If it's initiated by the pilots, does not require an amendment. So, should help us a bit on the burns. Let's take a look at our prog page. Sorry, fuel prediction page, rather. So now we've got almost three and a half hours of extra fuel. And we should land with 24.7. Tango Lima Alpha. Who is that? Tango Lima Alpha is Tala. Should be the Tala VOR. London, uh, easy three four. Uh, Charlie Mike two slow three zero four four. Easy three four Charlie Mike. Man, I'm telling you, there's there's so much going on ATC or Rabatsum wise, it's hard to even see anything. Got two people talking. I guess they didn't go to Dare. <laughs> I went to Dare. I still remember Dare very, very well. Concourse, 
Right, right three mic can have the landing control, thank you. Fly heading one four zero control. degrees. Climb flight level two nine zero. Let me when we get out of this guy's airspace, uh, we'll take a three look. Three we'll redo our hat flow. We'll update everything and um, take a look. See how much longer flight we got. <laughs> so did did y'all learn anything in there? Okay, several stations at once. CZ four three Charlie whiskey. They scared the hell out of me. I never touched. I've smoked pot a couple times, but I've never done anything more than that. Okay, aircraft flew in London, try again. Ryanair, one, three, also, who else? We're Anybody been playing there. Call of Duty Modern Stand Warfare 2? I've uh, been playing quite a bit. I've had like four or five crashes. Uh, Ryanair, one, three, nine, city. Roger, I'll call you back in two minutes, just something. And it's all been three, ten, go, hello, campaign. Climb flight level one, nine, zero. Campaign because of that. Shell three, tango, Roger. Climb level one, nine, zero, and it's a Honolulu one hotel arrival. One, nine, zero, Honolulu. Right now, six four Charlie Quebec, turn left heading two two zero degrees. Left heading two two zero degrees, right now, six four Charlie Quebec. AP four three Charlie Whiskey, you with me? Uh, hey, firm sir, uh, four three Charlie Whiskey. Uh, Hello, runway zero uh, nine, cliff takeoff, the surface wind is zero six zero ten. Fair, uh, cliff takeoff, uh, zero Would it nine. It'll be offensive if I talk back to him in my. Um... Speedbird one seven hotel, if you're with me, you can line up and wait runway zero nine, the, the, there's an A320 departing from the intersection. November 966, uh, November I'm going to wait for the A320 that's currently wait, okay, wait, in front of me to, to depart, zero, and then I'll leave after the intersection. Oh, okay, yeah, I see, you in, I see you inside of each other, so I can quite see you. See, four, five, Delta, Charlie, and Delta, line up and wait zero nine. Goodness, <laughs> a lot of people talking. I gave my girlfriend an uh, uh, old PS4. Send now flight level 90. It's a Zan so, Man of 1 Charlie arrival. Used to when I do before I let her have that. So she could play Modern Warfare. We'll play it together. I would have it plugged in and like. Sitting on a side monitor and stupid one four nine six stop climb flight level two eight to zero. Uh, play Call of Duty while climb flight level two eight zero four one four nine six. Which would then maybe want to fly longer flights. So I'd be interrupted less. Oh no, oh to Woodley easy seven zero six five. There you. Rhino three Mike November route direct begin Bravo. I think what I'm gonna do instead. Because I want to be different from everybody else. I'm going to call it, you know, very American. I'm going to say cheerio. Is that 3,000 feet? In, like, my American accent. November 966, November Kilo, monitor Unicom 1228, the way. Over to Unicom, November 966, November Kilo, cheerio. Cheerio, easy 9900, descend to flight level 8 to 3. Cool. That's a kick. i got to find your own. 9900, descend to I don't know shit about their SIDs and stars, and I mean, I, I know to some extent, but I'm not used to it. But this is fun. It's fun talking. Like I'm a, I'm a little fish in a big old pond, boy. I'm a little catfish. Who's uh Earl Grey? Not Earl Dibbles Jr. We could turn the seatbelt sign off for nobody that's on the airplane. So that's going to be the craziest thing. Whenever I do get to fly on one of these delivery flights, there's no seats on the airplane. It's going to be weird as hell seeing like a completely empty fuselage. I don't think there's any seats. I don't know if they do the overhead bins or not. But <clears throat> I have concluded that being in OCP's while playing COD does make you better. What is OCP, Josh? You'll probably tell me, and I'm like, oh, yeah, duh. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't know that, but one of my um, colleagues, uh, one of my operations managers, he is British. He's a former Royal Air Force dude. Um, great guy. Very... Uh, he married a girl from Indianapolis, now lives in Indy, and is a very much uh, American-oriented type guy now, very much about uh, freedom and all that good stuff. <clears throat> so um, 
Anyways, I will have to go to him and be like, hey man, you had any Earl Grey lately? And he'll be like, well, actually, yes, I have. I've had my, my Earl Grey this morning. He drinks tea often. New uniform for Air Force, same as... Oh, yeah, that's um that's been a thing for a hot minute. Um, they were starting to roll that out when I was in the Air Force back in 2011. Um, it was kind of spotty, and it was more so... Um, like, most of the guys in the Air Force who were wearing the multicams were um, on deployments. Uh, but yet now, it's they've kind of gotten rid of... They've phased out, for the most part, the... Um, I can't remember what the what the real name for it is, but those tiger stripe looking type shits. Uh, and now it's all multicam, and I am a huge, huge fan of multicam. I don't know why. I love, love, love multicam. I've got a few things in multicam myself. Got this here uh, little pouch that I, I carry a, a specific little fun little something in that is in a uh, multicam. And I've also got a little plate carrier as well. When I go to the range, so nobody hopefully pops a ricochet round off of nothing and hit me in the vitals. But yes. Um, yeah, both Army and Air Force will be wearing uh, multicams. And Army and Air Force are call it joint force, so. Now it's very common to see, um, like, uh, bases to be Army and Air Force. It's a joint force. It's pretty often that, um, like, Air Force uh, TACPs or combat controllers will um, deploy with um, Rangers and Green Berets, other elements of Special Forces, um, as well as just the general general operations or um, joint ran between both entities, if you will. <clears throat> I tried talking British. It just sounds like <laughs> a Mexican born in Japan. God, I wish I could hear that. <laughs> uh, so my job was, um, to put it in like simple terms, was basically, uh, how do I used to describe this? Um, I don't know. It's like it's like an airborne version of your air conditioned repairman. So for anybody that's not familiar with Army, um, Army airborne are the dudes you know static jump out of uh, out of airplanes. And my job was uh, a combat civil engineer specializing in HVAC, so air conditioning and heating, that kind of shit. So. There's two different units in the Air Force that of, of civil, uh, civil engineers. I don't know why I can't talk right now. Um, so there are prime beef. Uh, prime beef units operate within the wire only. And then red horse units that operate within the wire as well as outside the wire. So if there's like an army fob or an operating base um, that needs, I don't know, air conditioner fixed, um, red horse units will go outside the wire to the fob to fix it. Um, with that, uh, we would provide our own security, and I say we. Like I'm, I don't want to preference this that I like I did any of this shit because I didn't. I got med boarded out uh, very early in my um, Air Force career because of reoccurring injuries with my shoulders, um, and having a reoccurring injury with my shoulders or my shoulders sublux and dislocate very often with a combat job. Uh, they found me on fit for military duty, so I was med boarded out. Uh, but the VA did pay for my dispatch license, so. Uh, everything happens for a reason, but <clears throat> nonetheless, um, I was going to have to go to uh, jump school, probably um, where Airborne does all their training, because I believe that's where Air Force sends all their guys um, for jump school, learn how to static jump out of a C-130, um, and then I was going to have to go to weapons calls, learn how to shoot every handheld weapon that the Air Force has, as well as any other weapons that we could probably find on dead enemy combatants. Um, we ever have to pick one of those up uh, so we wouldn't have the army to provide our security we would have to provide our own security therefore that's when we had to go to the weapons quals and, and that kind of shit um, and yeah so then you know, we go to the fob and 
go fix their shit. And, um, but there's one other thing that we were supposed to train. I can't remember. But anyways, um, yeah, so it's just because we didn't have our own security, we would provide our own security, sort of like combat, a combat role, which could get in firefights. Um, but I never did any of this shit, so. But my fallback was, like, I can go to the Air Force, learn this HVAC stuff, so flying or aviation didn't work out. Coming from Louisiana, where it's hot and humid as hell, and everybody's going to pay a pretty penny to have that air conditioner running. Uh, plus, one of our neighbors down the road, um, where I grew up, owned his own HVAC company, and the dude was rolling. Uh, so I was thinking, like, well, you know, if flying don't work out, then I'll start my own HVAC business. And, um, fortunately, aviation did work out. So, I'm not crawling under mobile homes and houses and stuff uh, working on HVAC. Now, one of my best friends uh, does do HVAC for a living. Um, more power to him. I'll stick with airplanes. But, uh, anyways, that's what my job was. Combat civil engineer. From 307th Red Horse uh, out of Barksdale Air Force Base in Bossier City, Louisiana. Go hundred first. <laughs> I was thinking you taught flight sim in the Air Force. Nope, that would be cool. And that's, I mean, you have to obviously be like, you have to be a real pilot. Um, they so they they do have sims, and I recently saw a video on YouTube where they, uh, what's that guy's name? Might be able to find it. Hazard, Hazard Lee, I think is his. Yeah. And so he did an episode. Uh, if y'all don't follow this guy, um, seems very, very fighter pilot personality, very type A, very like, but makes incredible content. Um, but yeah, did an episode. Uh, where it takes a tour of the Skunk Works Air Force Pilot Training Detachment. So it's basically... Um, uh oh. What happened to the camera? Stand by, guys. I'll get that, I'll get that dog camera back up. Waiting for connection. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> it's getting close to D I N N E R time for dogs she's probably gonna get a little restless anyways um flying over edinburgh right now in glasgow which is our alternate um what are we talking about though i don't remember oh yeah this hazard lee dude Anyways, this guy makes really, really, really solid fighter Air Force um, oriented content. Well, they got different simulators uh, that teach a lot of the guys in. These are all uh, fighter pilots in real life. And they fly, I think, T6 Texans, some uh, Hawkers. Yeah, ST6 Texas are practicing flying in formation. Pretty interesting um, video. They're all flying in VR, which is really cool. These are some pretty high end setups. But yeah, 
view simulators to get ever to get those guys um, oriented to the airplane before going to jump in the real thing. It's pretty neat. But um, yeah, no, this guy he he's got some really good like real life content if y'all haven't heard about him. I think he was F-16. Now he's F-35 driver. Speaking of fighters, actually went to an air show yesterday and uh, watched the Thunderbirds, F-22, F-18, Growler. No, it was Super Hornet. Um, what else? Some SOCOM para para jumpers of some sort. Um, what else? Extra 300. Some other biplane. The last the, we went to this air show a couple of years ago and it's a little bit better. They had F-35, F-22, A-10, Viper. They didn't have an A-10, um, and there was also the Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds were missing their fifth. Um, no, I think number three plane. So like the diamond wasn't a diamond, that kind of thing. But anyways, yesterday's air show was, was uh, pretty damn good. We, we decided to leave a couple minutes early to try to beat a lot of the traffic out, and we were walking, got out to the trucks, so we were a little bit a ways behind the flight line, but we were still like center, sh center line, or center show, whatever they call it, and um, the Thunderbird Diamond came right overhead at about 200 feet. All four airplanes were an afterburner. That shit hurt my ears, and I, I have a high tolerance for like jet engine sounds. I mean, they were doing sneak passes and like a lot of afterburner stuff and like you know there's a lot of people with um, ear pro on, not me. Like I want to hear every bit of it. I want to feel it rumble in my chest and maybe tickle down south a little bit. But this, all four airplanes, full afterburners, right overhead, 200 feet, was incredibly loud and it legit caused pain in both mine and my girlfriend's ears. So that was cool. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> But uh, it was a really fun air show. F-18 was kicking some ass too. The F-22 though, holy shit, this sexiest air, sexiest fighter in my opinion, and just the performance, the agility of that airplane is unbelievable. Oh shit, that's right. Yeah, I forgot you were a 364. We talked about that before. Going to 164 maintenance. That's maintenance, right? MXS. Maintenance squadron, as avionics tech to put it simply. That's kick ass, man. Do you know where you're gonna be stationed yet? Cause you're active duty, right? I got family that does HVAC and they make money. Yeah, there's a lot of money to be made in HVAC, especially in the South where it's so hot and muggy. <clears throat> and how much longer, Josh, do you have on that uh? On your tech school. You've been there for a hot minute. It's weird to think they haven't pet a dog for four to five months. Yeah. And that man, honestly, like when I was at Shepherd, um I was seriously considering like going to um like on the weekends, going to um like shelters and just volunteer my time to just like be around dogs and like pet dogs and I mean it's when you go so long without animal that you love so much it's it's crazy how therapeutic something so simple can be plus you're doing a good thing and helping them out <clears throat> oh that's right yeah I forgot forgot your ANG uh, do do? yep hazard lead oh shit that's cool uh, so Josh have you been able to play around on the on the sim <coughs> I've been summoned. All right, Shaq. We'll see you uh, later on. We'll probably be on the ground by the time you get done trick or treating and taking your taxes, tyrant. <laughs> Going back home to Memphis is nice. So, what airframe are you going to be on? Cause they got C5s in Memphis, right? I think that's what's based there. And Josh, are you in multicams, or are you in the, I can't remember what the name for the, the older Air Force 
uniform is. But anyways, are you multicams? Because if you are, I'm jealous. Uncle did 20 years with the Air National Guard, 118th Airlift Wing National. That's badass. So what, um, Abgeek, what was, uh, what airframe was your uncle on? Yeah, VR does take it to a whole nother level. I've got Oculus Rift sitting right here. Oculus Rift S, or I don't know, whatever one that still plugs into your computer. Uh, that's what I fl use whenever I fly on um, uh, DCS. And there's, in my opinion, there's no other way to play DCS. Like, it has to be in VR for it to even be adequate. <clears throat> But I've taught a few others how to fly. Nice. And so, in with the simulator, what um, what airplanes are y'all playing around in? I'm in multicams. ABUs. That's right. I knew it was AB something, but I didn't want to say it. Say it wrong. It sounds stupid. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love multicams. <laughs> Memphis has C-17s now. Oh, uh, okay. Nice. Well, I would much rather work on a C-17 than a C-5 anyways. They had a static C-17 display at the air show yesterday. I was telling Crystal, my girlfriend, I was like, hey, this was like, this was the plan back in the day. I was, was I went enlisted, but I was going to use my um, post-911 GI Bill to pay for school, go commission, and if I had my choice, it was going to be a C-17. Um, so it's kind of cool to show her the, the airplane that I intended to on. I think I got a picture of it. It's just the butt, butthole end of a C-17. Yeah, that was yesterday. Couple pics with a nice ass in the background. Super Hornet. As he's taking off, doing a dirty roll, <coughs> then proceeds to do a little barrel roll while his gears down. That was a uh, accident. <laughs> Watched any of these that negative G? Yeah, I love the Super Hornet. It's a good looking airplane. I think this is a uh, high speed, high speed pass. It wouldn't focus. Frickin' loud. Loved it. A little inverted action. to sit in the back seat of that thing. And I'm, if any of y'all know more about the F-18 than I do, F-18, does the F-18 have the ability to fuel dump? So I feel like they do, and I think it's at the top of the vertical stabilizer, which looks like that's what they're doing right here. As they're, This was like towards the end of flying inverted for a hot minute, so I don't know if that's something the airplane does autom automatedly. 
Wow, it's inverted that long or something or what? It's high off the pass, it's slow. That's what we got right here. This girl got a wedgie. Navy Legacy flyover or demonstration with the Corsair. This dude put on a hell of a show, although I didn't video any of it. <coughs> There's F4 and Super Hornet. They actually bring two different airplanes the day before they flew off. Different airplane with had all, all sorts of paint and logos and stuff on it. And this will be the 22 demonstration. That airplane's agility is nuts. F-18s was faster. Oh yeah, so it was pretty cool. I uh, went and had a chat with some of the recruiters over at L3 uh, Flight School, asked them if they had a dispatch uh, program. Got a couple buddies here in Orlando that are interested in getting their uh, dispatch license. Uh, they do not. A uh, lady I talked to had just implemented uh, a rotary program, uh, and next she said she wants to do this. Um, and then her and I had a little chat about her son. Her son was wanting to, wanting to do dispatch, but he's 19. Can't dispatch till 23. Can't get your license until 21, I believe. Um, so she's like, you know, what's he supposed to do until he's 23? I'm like, well, do what I did. Just go work the ramp, throw some bags, and be able to learn about the, you know, 121 operation, and then uh, get the license and go dispatch. And then after uh, her and I had some more talking. Uh, now she is actually uh, looking at going to get her dispatch certificate and uh, go to dispatch. We exchange some information, and uh, she's already a you know, CFI rated pilot, so she's got a lot of the stuff under her belt. She could probably take the ATP and pass it, and with that, she just needs to take a couple more weeks of uh, the flight planning. Oh, hang on, guys. My boss is calling. That's really weird. <laughs> so yep, Josh, that is the that's the boss. Uh, uh, actually, told her when she when I answered the phone, I was like, I'm actually talking to your stepson right now. He's in the chat. Um, 
anyways, boss is just calling to adjust my start time for tomorrow. Um, we got a big IT cutover thing happening tomorrow. It's probably going to affect the operation a little bit. Uh, so pushing my start time back a few hours. But um, anyways, so yeah, so the dispatch uh, or this um, recruiter slash um, CFI pilot lady, uh, she's already got, she can probably pass the ATP or the ADX rather. And with that, then she just needs to take the two weeks of uh, flight planning and uh, aircraft systems and then take her oral and practical and then she can dispatch. Um, our starting pay at my company is what she's making now. Um, and then get a pretty big bump whenever uh, this new contract goes through next year. And uh, so I think she's uh, pretty interested now. That's pretty cool. And um, she asked me, she's like, you know, are you military? I was like, well, used to be. And uh, so she gave me a challenge coin that they give to all active and uh, active military and veterans. So this was my challenge coin. It's pretty cool. And then the beautiful F-22. Now I was trying to remember where, what code FF is. Like I know Tyndall is TY. I can't remember what FF is. But I told Crystal instead it just means fucking freedom. And we got the Thunderbirds taking off. You got the slot airplane sliding on over to form up the diamond. That's always one of the coolest things. Oh, <laughs> his dad's got his hands over his kid's head. That's kind of funny. Yeah, it was a it was a great air show. My camera was not doing very well in the bright light. We got one part of the video um, where they did a sneak high-speed pass, <clears throat> and it's fun seeing everybody's reactions. It scares the shit out of them. This is a pretty good one. I think I captured this one well. Eighteen inches apart. It's freaking wild. Ah, Langley, okay. Knife edge. It's a fast ass knife edge. That's my girlfriend. So I think right here is when the sneak pass happens and it scares the absolute this is one of the sneak passes it scares the absolute shit out of me and I just told the the maneuver before this I told my girlfriend it's like they always do a sneak pass and they try to scare you and it always comes from behind you when you're not paying attention they always do some sort of slow maneuver so that you're like fixated on it and then bam they hit you with a sneak pass well the very next maneuver this maneuver right here I think is when they did a sneak pass and it was not from behind, it was from the left, and it scared the shit out of me. 
when they did the one from behind, I was ready for it. I made sure to cut the camera off before I screamed cuss words, but I, I yelled cuss words. <laughs> Slow roll. I think it's barrel roll. Center back on. Let's see. Thirty-five fifty-two. Man, if you want ATC coverage, just come out to Europe. Good evening, the 8507 with you, 50380. There's a dude off our left. 8507, Scottish Control, good evening. I will call you back. Hello, Scottish Control. November 966, November Kilo with you, flight level 380, one three miles south of Sierra Tango, November. November 966, November Kilo, Scottish Control, good evening, May take flight level 380. Noise! Now he doesn't sound very Scottish. I want a Scottish guy. So we're going to see that other guy. There's another dude somewhere around us. Uh, I guess he's quite a bit ahead of us, actually. Easy 409. Good. I wish that Nice, let's get uh Airline Group 3 to Lima, follow the Tonsley 1 Echo arrival for Edinburgh, to send now flight level 150. Send flight level 150 and we follow the Tonsley 1 Echo arrival into Edinburgh. And we're just about Correct. Enter the water in. portion of our flight. Uh, good evening, we are on Airbus 8320 and have one echo descending flight level 160 to level by Estel. Easy 363, home, Scottish Control. Good evening, that's correct. Uh, you can read right now to Tartan. And descend flight level 110. Tartan flight level 110, easy. His transmission sound a little. Like, slightly broken or something. We found the cargo 8296, it's the Agped. One golf arrival for Glasgow. Redirect now to Tower. Um, all right, Alpha, let's get and descend flight all of level this 200. updated. Scottish Control, you have to be You give a firm apologies. We're not there concentrating very well tonight. Is it one two zero? You said for turn. EC 363 uniform. Uh, you can send out to flight level. Nine 
Alright, we've got the same METAR that we covered a while ago. Uh, so let's get this updated to... Easy 57 trying to hit that old. 079 is in there. Temperature 6, still 160. So now it's 220 at 10. Starting to favor more of our preferred runway. I wouldn't say preferred runway, but planned runway. Uh, bow. Proc page, we got 575 miles to go. 575 miles across water. So on the flight plan, showing uh, ETA 1126. So that's about another hour and 20 minutes. You know, guys, I think it's time to go uh, go to the loo and take a whiz and then drink a beer. So, give me one sec. Be right back with y'all. Easy 409, are you squawking? Oh, I just found you. Yeah, sorry, you weren't showing up properly on my radar. I will call you back shortly for a second. Easy 409, squawk 3622. So you quit Bristol via Lisbon, Lima, 603, Tapod, climb altitude 4,000 feet, squawk, give you a squawk code, 3630. Easy 4632, hello, descending to flight level 60. Easy 4632, Scottish hello, descend now, flight level 110. One was Cottage Control, good evening. Nordic 8 for Lima, reaching flight 340 inbound the BIP. Nordic 8 for Lima, Scottish Control, hello, Perth 1 Golf Arrival for Edinburgh. Perth 1 Golf Arrival, Edinburgh, thank you. Nordic 8 for Lima. Sorry, 
readability three. Lufthansa Cargo A two nine six descend. Uh, sorry, uh, expect RLS two three. Not much to see out here. Eh? Everything is covered in clouds. Yeah. Easy four six three two vectoring on approach from way two to at city. Fly heading three two zero degrees. Fly three two zero degrees. One easy four six three two descend altitude four thousand feet. QNH is one sorry QNH nine and nine and nine ahead to Pascal. So, here's my thoughts for tomorrow, maybe. No promises, but <clears throat> so tomorrow I've got to take my girlfriend's car in to uh, get... I guess I'm going to have to drive her car to work tomorrow. Anyways, um, I'll take her car in tomorrow to get uh, a tire patched at 9.15 in the morning. So I'm thinking maybe when I get back... Because I'm not going to work until 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Maybe we can do Keflavik, Detroit. Which is. correct. Route direct. Uh. Hot. Almost twice as long as this leg. Maybe we can have enough time to do that tomorrow. I do want to make sure I get enough sleep because it's going to be a long night. Mm, that's a good beer. Scottish, uh, Nordic for Lima, uh, confirm uh, direct Glesk. A little ding a ling. Hey, for Lima, correct. Redirect Glesk. Direct Glesk, Nordic for Lima. Well, I like your version of FF better, right? Easy 409, contact London 127, decimal 825, good day. 127, decimal 825, Wonder, we should be on a ground before trick or treaters start. No, it's going to be about 6.30 speed. <coughs> it's starting to get dark around that time. Delta 6 November, Scottish Control, good evening. Rebel 1, Golf Arrival. Maybe Cross I should go ahead and go put that doggy gate up so kids don't one, golf, uh, fucking... Hi, John. Actually, I'll, I'm going to wait until we get out of uh, this airspace. Giant 85 x thanks. I feel like Iceland is five, slow sir. enough that nobody's really going to control Iceland. I wish it would snow when we get there. That'd be cool. Ah, now we got a new... New TAF. Damn it, me tarming. Perf. This one's a cargo A296, descend flight level 130. So winds are now 200 at 22. Damn, the winds really picked up. So no, don't have to worry about any obscuration, that's for sure. EC4632, reduce speed 180 knots or less. Reduce 180 knots or less, EC4632. EC4632, depend on 2,000 feet. Temperature still 6. Uh, still quad 9 on the Viz. Anyways, the, the METAR now was 200 at 22. Quad 9, light drizzle, broken at 400, overcast 800. Temperature 6, 2.6. And then the altimeter is 0980. Definitely windy. It's not even gusty. It's just like steady state at 22 knots. Jeez. 4632, turn left heading 240 degrees. Establish localizer 22. Left 240, establish localizer 22. We're going to see a dog over there licking her lips a lot because she just got done eating dinner. Yeah, you can see her looking. Old fat butt. Oh, so goal is to be a little tipsy by the time we can shoot the approach. Cottage uh, Nordic, it's fully in request uh, one zero ten minutes out of the cockpit. So guys, if you haven't done so already, please smash the like button. Definitely helps the algorithm. Helps show other people the streams and uh, bring some more viewers to uh, 
to the channel. Nonetheless, I appreciate everybody who's come and hang out with us today. <laughs> Hell yeah, Halloween brews. What's up, dude? <laughs> Happy Halloween to you. Uh, fortunately for you, I guess your kid is by far too young to go trick or treating, so you don't have to deal with that yet. Shaq, on the other hand, Shaq was in the chat earlier. Um, he has a great, um, great methodology to trick or treating. And now that you're a new dad, uh, and Zach, I know you got one coming too. So, which Zach, you were in the chat um, whenever Shaq was here. But um, I think it's some good takeaways from one dad to another dad. And Shaq's belief is, he shall tax the children, which he has three. I don't know if this is per child, but it should be. He shall while he was up, dude. Flying, uh, I was actually going to fly the fly-by-wire today in a livery that a friend of mine painted, uh, November 966, November Kilo, to Neo, but I was having some weird, stupid, like, little issues with the fly-by-wire, because it's fly-by-wire things, um, yesterday during some test flights, so I opted to go with 967, or 697, rather, and pretend, now 967 is coming, it is the next delivery after 966 because 966 967 i think i don't know we might be going 966 to 970 971 then back 967 968 969 not sure but anyways 967 is coming um but anyway so i'm flying your 697 and uh as always fucking love it uh i'm flying the 4k one right now which the performance man seems fuck kick ass compared to the 8k at least what i get like when i'm panning around outside on an airport um but anyways so from shack father of three to you hillbilly father of one he shall i'm gonna try to do this in like 1776 language he oh, wonderful. Sh shall tax children one candy piece for every 20 minutes of treating the triggers. Once the children are asleep is when he shall deduct his taxes from the kids' taking. So that's what you can do in the future. For every, now, if it were me, I would probably go a little, little more harsh on the taxes. And maybe for every like 5 to 10 minutes of trick-or-treating, if there's less kids more candy right so or more candy per minutes so if you have one kid maybe it's one piece of candy for every five minutes of trick-or-treating and if you got three kids maybe it's one piece of candy per kid for every 20 minutes i you just get your ass some candy steal it from your kids because you know dad taxes like shaq said May 23th, man, that shit's gonna be here way before you know it. Come fast, like you did when you knocked her up. <laughs> yeah, man, I can't wait either. That's, that's gonna bring so much to to V Spirit, and then I've got to. One of our goals at V Spirit is to try to like implement realistic dispatch so like there'll be like a dispatch channel or something on their discord put in a flight request and another human being go and dispatch that flight and have a way of pushing the OFP to the pilot uh, who requested the OFP uh, which is kind of how it works in real life so it's something we're shooting for There's some technicalities they're gonna have to figure out um, I have been tasked with trying to develop a dispatch program so we can like teach people basic dispatch, what the one two three rule is, um, like what altitude to plan flights per direction of flight, routing, you know the simple dispatch stuff, and then have like a fuel policy. Um, and then we can start like dispatching flights for pilots and then make it that much more realistic and more make the airline more attractive. 
Aberdeen landing runway 16. Runway 16, Aberdeen uh, 255. Los Santa Cargo 8296, same altitude 5000 feet. QNH <laughs> is 9 Yeah. 9 uh, Sorry, correction. QNH is 1002. Yeah, per, per shack, his feet. policy is he deducts one candy for every 20 minutes in dad taxes uh, that he has to go trick-or-treating. Yep, so there you go, Zach. So essentially, um, if we get this dispatch program running, then you would like put in a request somehow. we do not not really sure how. Maybe Discord. Um, and then when we receive the request, I or somebody else go plan the flight for you. Probably somebody else because I'm always so damn busy. And um, then, like, you know, you don't even have to go plan it. You just, like, get your OFP. I'm like, all right, well, this is what we're flying. Um, which brings me to another point, though. Something I just thought about. So, like, I don't know how y'all do your V Spirit flight plans when you're booking a flight. I do dispatch separately from Simbrief because I want to do my own shit. I don't want, like, Simbrief to do anything for me. Um,. <laughs> Alright, Rio. I didn't know you were even still here, man. Two five two five club level Been hanging out for a hot two minute. Two Sounds good, dude. Level two two zero, you mean two five two five. Um, but yeah, so like for people who dispatch separately on Simbrief, uh, I guess like there's gonna be some some things there as far as the booking flight portion of of V Spirit for for the pilots. But yeah, I got, I'm supposed to figure out like a little dispatch program and I don't really know if I'm going to have the time to do it because now I'm doing the delivery flight stuff at work i am got this like whole R&P AR approaches and LPV approach program coming up we're going to be implementing those into the op specs um, plus all this other general manager shit so it's going to be tough but and I got a girlfriend if I didn't have a girlfriend I'd have a lot more time There might ought to be some trick-or-treaters. Giant eight two nine six turn left heading two six zero degrees. Thank you. Santa Cargo eight two nine six turn left, heading two. Zero zero degrees. Clear by left approach two three. Got the GV eight five zero. So we still meant to be with you. With uh, everything's coming a bit crackly. Oh, that would be why, yeah, if you're going to go you come, please, wanted to take care. Okay, once you do that, I'm late for you, 8507, no worries, bye-bye. 337, make some contact. Easy, 337, Scottish Control, good evening, climb now, flight level 190. Flight level 190. Easy, 337, I'm just, just make sure you include your call sign afterwards as well, so climb flight level 190, easy, 337. Perfect, thank you.
And November 96th, it's November Kilo. Uh, next sector is offline, Unicom 122, Destiny. Good day. We'll head over to Unicom. Have a great day. November 966, November Kilo. Cheerio. You too, cheerio. <laughs> They're so nice over here. No problem, Wes. Totally understand. I get plenty of meetings myself. If there's issues with the uh, stream, I do apologize. I, it's like I'm hitting a pretty big lull in the uh, internet connectivity or something. I'm not sure. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming as such viewers will experience buffering. Not great. So for me to go change everything back to uh, 1080, I would have to kill the stream and like restart it and put in the new stream key and change some settings. So it's not optimal to do such. Maybe tomorrow, knock it back down to 1080. So we got another airplane headed out to uh, Keflavik as well. Little bit out ahead of us. Looks like he's shortcutting over to Alden. He's somewhere out there. It's his altitude. He is at 37,000-ish feet. Just about an hour left. There we go. Stream is healthy. Good deal. <clears throat> Darn Brits and their bland cereal. <laughs> I've never had British cereal, so I would not know. I usually will pick up the route and flight info off of FlightAware. And such, and then custom set it on Simbrief to match. Okay. Um, I believe Simbrief pulls routes, um, pulls like the top most used routes from FlightAware. Um, the routes that it uses are actually pretty dang good, especially for as automated as Simbrief is. Um, in fact, I was thinking earlier when I was running the flight plan, uh, so I, I, I ran a prelim flight plan early this morning. Just to make sure, like I wasn't fumbling around with routes and stuff. And uh, when I re-put when I re-put the the city pair, it changed the arrival runway for a change in the winds because it had been like 12 hours. Um, and it with that, the arrival that I was originally planning was no longer um, like it wasn't usable with that runway. And Simbrief knew that, which is pr honestly. And I, it's kind of embarrassing to say this, but like our own dispatch software at my company won't even do that. It won't know that. Um, it's kind of up to our key users, the people who program our software for us, uh, to program the software that way that you can't use like this arrival with this runway. Um, but they don't for some. So SimBrief, like I was pretty impressed that SimBrief knew that. I was like, yeah, you can't use the Azrin whatever the hell uh azrun run or azrun one i think it was alpha uh on runway 28 so i was like oh shit that's it's pretty good so i've got some pretty good um confidence in simbrief more than i originally would now if they would just implement some other features like putting in block fuel or remaining fuel like fuel that you want to land with at your destination a um, few more things that are missing that they would throw in there that are pretty basic functions would be phenomenal. But um, 
Simbri's come a long way. Drew, what's up, man? Happy Halloween. Cheers to you. On that note, let me go run outside real quick and put the gate up uh, and so like these kids can't come knocking on my damn door. Well, that was unsuccessful. I, uh, the doggy gate's not nearly wide enough to keep kids out, so don't know what to do. I wasn't here last year. I was commuting last year uh, during Halloween, and my girlfriend like had the front porch lights on, or off, rather. Everything off. She was in the bedroom in the back of the house, trying to make the house look as dark as possible. And kids were still ringing the doorbell. Like, parents were letting their kids go to a dark house and ring the doorbell. 
because we're trying to avoid that. Um, enjoy the rest of your stream. I'm going to get some food and get ready for the, ooh, Phillies game. After that, it's time to do some last-minute studying, see if I've written, holy shit. Well, Wiley, good luck, dude. You got it. Follow your gut. If it's like multiple choice shit, don't change your, like, go with your gut choice. Don't change it. That's what I did in my ADX, and it, the ones that I missed were ones I was like, oh, I'm not really sure about this. Think my original answer is wrong. Let me change it. When I changed it, I was wrong, and I was right the first time. Just trust your gut. So how can I keep these kids from ringing my damn doorbell? Or I could just like not be a Scrooge and go buy some candy. Put the dogs outside, kids beware. Yeah. And this other thing too is like both of our dogs are going ape shit and the kids don't care. Like they just, they're just trying to get candy. Maybe I should make them work for it. Like but the candy be worth it. Like maybe go get some like legit candy bars and not like, you know, little travel size shit and be like um, I don't know. Just make them work for it somehow. Give them a riddle or some something stupid. These kids these days, they just, they just want everything given to them. They don't want to work for it. So be like, what happened on December 7th, 1942? And they'll be like five years old. Kit, you're not getting this candy bar if you can't tell me what happened on 9, 1942, December 7th. <coughs> and then a parent like whispers in their ear, Pearl Harbor. I'm like, nope. You did not declare using your lifeline, so you cheated. Get off my property. It's been a cloudy venture, like, this entire flight. Or if there's any good, uh, like, airport live streams going on. Shouldn't have too much further to go. Oh. Damn, Shaq's gonna be streaming the night? And trick-or-treating the same night? PMDG, Los Angeles, Vegas, and Fresno. Okay. Let's see. Live plane spotting. What we got? We got JFK. It's live. Melbourne. Looks like what the hell? I typed in live plane spotting and something about like some sort of I don't know vagina waxing popped up. What the hell is this? I'm obviously not gonna show this on stream because you know. I think this is clickbait. Fucking clickbait. Alright. JFK, let's see what's going on at JFK tonight. Why isn't the pop out working? This isn't live. So it started streaming eight hours ago, but it's like they don't look live to me. Yeah, this can't be live. LX is coming online in about 20 minutes. We'll be 
probably on descent a little after that why is the pop out not working oh well we tried and we failed <clears throat> out of step what's up dude Happy Halloween to you as well. Do you have any advice on switching shifts because the night shift at my job is slow and I'm a hard worker and I just don't like it anymore. I work in the industry, just having a hard time figuring it out. I uh, did apply for another job. So I'm guessing when you say within the industry, you mean, um, uh, where to go? I work in the industry. So you mean aviation industry, correct? Um, as far as I know, with just about any job in aviation, it's all about seniority. Um, everything is seniority based. Um, so like in my company, uh, we put out a bid for the entire year. So people can bid what line, what shift they want for the entire year. And uh, their seniority is what will determine um, what they get um, in competition to other people who are um, interested in that same line. So like, the more senior you are, the less lines you have to bid on because you know like if you're first in seniority, you only need to bid on one line because you get first pick. And if you're second in seniority, then you bid on two lines because the guy above you may take what you want. So then there needs to be another pick behind that one. Um, when you're junior, obviously you need to you have to pick like a bunch, just about everything, because uh, there's a lot of people above you who can take what you want. Um, so it's all about seniority based. Um, same thing with pilots. Uh, they have uh, bids based on their, like, so there's, like, pilots who are based at, like, Orlando or Lauderdale or Atlanta or whatever the case. And so they'll have a bid per base. Um, but without knowing exactly what it is you do, it's hard to say. But even, like, when I worked, when I worked uh, like, ground operations at my hometown airport, uh, it was still seniority-based. Um most senior got to choose what they wanted for the most part um yeah i'm mean, so i guess really with i currently work in charter so it's a little i uh, gotcha okay yeah i don't know i got a good buddy of mine um good friend of mine uh is a part 135 dispatcher and flight salesman i guess you could say um and he's kind of told what to work versus getting to choose a shift um i don't know if seniority comes into play it might come into play a little bit but i do know he's been thrown around from like morning shift mid shift to overnight shift um and i know a lot of people hate the overnight shift i personally am an overnight shift person i am nocturnal as hell i've always been that way um so like that's that's where i thrive I worked the morning shift as a dispatcher at my company for my first year, and I was a freaking zombie. And um, now I'm on the overnights, and I am sharp. Um, but a lot of people aren't that way. Their circadian rhythm isn't, you know, they're not tuned to that, uh, which is understandable. Most people aren't. Plus, there's a lot of life stuff. You know, people who have kids want to work the morning shift or a mid shift so they can be home at night with their kids and stuff like that. Totally understandable. But, uh, you know, if you can't change the system, and the system won't allow you to, um, you know, to to get a shift that you want, then yeah, you probably made the right move by applying for another job. Um, but there's always going to be some sort of paying your dues, and unfortunately, that's part of paying your dues. That sometimes you might have to work a shift that you don't want for a little while to ultimately get what you want. Uh, that's been one of the great things about my company, and having a smaller group compared to like the big four who have hundreds and hundreds of dispatchers. Um, you know, we're a group of about 100, and I started five five years ago, uh, so I'm already over halfway up the seniority list, and being that I like the overnight shift, um, I get that every time because most people don't want it. On the flip side, uh, now I'm dispatch manager, and I am the most senior dispatch manager that we have, which is kind of a scary thought. Uh, so with that, I get my first choice, and I choose the, um, like, our shifts and, and management are a little bit different. We don't really have an overnight um, but I, I do bid the later uh, of the shifts that we can choose from. Um, 
Uh oh. Snipers! Snipe away. <laughs> oh, I'm not streaming tonight. I'll have my head carved like a pumpkin. Oh, so when is that? Is that tomorrow night? I always just look at the time and not the date. Oh, hell, that's for the third. Damn. I wish I was good enough to schedule my stuff that far out. Let people know what I'm actually going to be doing. Thank you, snipers. Appreciate your service. <laughs> Even Rampa just bid in my days off based on seniority. Yeah. That's a very... Uh, Part 121 operations type thing. That's for the advice. I'll figure it out. See what's best for me. I can choose what shift. I just work the nights until I graduate until December. My night shift is like six hours of watching video. Ooh, that's gross. So when you say six hours watching video, like watching movies and like enjoyable video or videos of like computer based training type videos. Those suck. Ooh, that reminds me. I've got seven modules do at work. Mm. So is that what you're doing right now? Are you at work right now? <laughs> and you're bored so you're watching the stream? <laughs> That's what I do at work. Even when I'm working, like if Shaq or somebody's streaming, then I'll, I'll turn it on in the background and just kind of watch or listen while I'm doing uh, other work stuff. But man, if you're such a hard worker, go be a cowboy. That's some hard work. Long days. Or join the military. Do the same thing. It'll kick your ass. 17 hour long days. At least in basic. Basic 17 hour long days. I don't know what like active duty type stuff is. It's probably closer to 8 eight to ten hour shifts well time for the kids to take me on a walk and drink <laughs> damn that's the way to do it take your kids trick-or-treating and drink at the same time that makes it far more enjoyable like ah uh, dude you're inspiring maybe now I'll go be a dad psych movies okay I mean it's not the worst like in the world of dispatch you can you can have nights that are brain-numbingly boring, or you can have nights where you're just utterly getting your teeth kicked down your throat. When your teeth are getting kicked down your throat, there's more opportunity to mess up, and if you mess up bad enough, you'll lose your dispatch certificate, which is your livelihood, because then you can't dispatch anywhere else, um, and you're screwed. So if I have to choose between the two, I would rather go with slow and boring than fast and getting my teeth kicked in, because it's better for my livelihood. But two different worlds. Two totally different worlds. So, out of step, whenever you graduate in December, what are you going to do then? Graduate in college or? <laughs> yeah, Josh, I hear you on that. So, for everybody's not familiar with Josh. He is in uh, tech school at Shepard Air Force Base in uh, 864 Training Squadron. Um, and yeah, I can contest to that. Especially when somebody screws up in your squadron, um, the cadre will fuck with you and uh, wake you up randomly at like 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. Well, I guess 4 a.m. is probably the standard time to wake up for PT. But um, anyways, they'll, they'll have you do stupid shit as punishment just to mess with you but I think even active duty Air Force and Air National Guard like when you're done with tech school and you've passed your CDCs and you go like to to work um, I think it's still just like an 8 to 10 hour shift obviously deployments probably vary a little bit right, let's see where we're at 
Closing in on that top of descent. Two steep path ahead. Cool. Don't care. Uh, top of descent. It's like 118, 128 miles. I have a friend who works at one of the majors and I applied for, so I'm quite happy about that. I'm used to busy work. <clears throat> I can still work when it's slow. Okay. <coughs> So what's uh what what's your uh what's your degree gonna be in when you graduate? Um and do you have like a well I guess I'll let you answer that first. I know some universities have like aviation majors and then um, dispatch can be a minor kind of thing and you obtain your dispatch certificate. Yeah, I mean I can understand how that gets incredibly boring, but. I mean, maybe it's worth riding it out for just another month instead of going through the hassle of trying to find another job and then graduate. But, uh... So, yeah, so my question is, do you already have your dispatch certificate? And also, how old are you? Because I can kind of give a little, uh, little insight on the dispatch world. Oh, hell yeah. Communication studies with a minor in aerospace science. Nice. So you don't have your dispatch license yet. So you'll have to go, you can go do the, the little five-week course, um, get your dispatch license. Let's check latest METARs. We're getting close. We've got a new METAR now. Winds are 210 at 24 knots. Temperature 6. <coughs> Altimeter 0981. Winds are kicking up a good bit. Uh, visibility right now is quad nines, vicinity showers broken at 400. So we got some low ceilings, broken at four, overcast at nine, but still shouldn't be any issue. I'm 24, no dispatch license yet, but I can do it online if needed. So I am familiar with the knowledge, etc. Since I work with dispatchers all the time at work in the charter world. Okay, so dispatchers in the in the charter world are night and day different from part 125 so charters is part 135 operations airlines are part 121 scheduled operations very 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 incredibly different like almost opposite uh, a buddy of mine that's a part 135 dispatcher and flight salesman um, i went to his work up in memphis um, a few months ago but um, i was chatting with some of his colleagues they use the same um they use the same software that we use as far as like to monitor flights like with radar you know like where the airplane is on the map like that kind of stuff and we were talking about airspace flow programs with ATC and stuff like that and I was telling them like all right well if you use this layer on flight explorer it'll show you where the AFPs are so if you route around what's called a route out if you route around that you will be excluded from the AFP and you can depart on time but they're like oh that's not what we want to do so for them, they're getting paid by time. And if there's an AFP and the flight is delayed two hours because of flow by ATC, well, that's an extra two hours that they're making money. In our world, in 121, the longer we're delayed, the more it hurts our performance numbers with the Department of Transportation, the worse it makes our airline look with the passengers. Like, we are in the business of getting from A to B safely, legally, and on time as best we can. So for us, we want to route around those AFPs, whereas 135, they just want to take the delay and make that extra money. Um, so very two very, very different worlds. Um, 
Part 121 is uh, way more restrictive as far as like laws and regulations go. Um, two very different worlds. But you know, not everybody is a Part 121 airliner, commercial airlines type people. A lot of folks like GA and private jets far more than they like um, you know Airbuses and that kind of stuff. So if that's what floats your boat, um, the more power to you. But if you have any any plans of going to you know major carrier um there's not going to be a whole lot that you're going to learn from a 135 guy that's going to that you're going to be able to take to a 121 and a lot of the majors don't give two shits about 130 you can dispatch part 135 for 10 years and to them that is virtually zero experience uh because the operations are just so different they want part 121 experience um could be a little bit different these days just with the shortage of dispatchers and everybody else, pilots, mechanics, flight attendants, everybody. So they, they might be a little more willing to look at you, but um, prior to that, they couldn't care at all about 135. And I don't mean to, like, be too blunt or whatever, but um, just shooting you straight. Um, you know, we, we've hired a couple uh, a couple dispatchers recently with uh, just 135 experience, and they're smart people. They... They know, like they can learn the material, but their experience um, is just far different. Like a 135 dispatcher, they're some don't even plan the flight. Like the pilots still plan the flight. Some 135 folks do plan the flight, but they're also, in addition to flight planning, their crew scheduling, um, they're like a salesperson. They they do a bunch of different stuff. Where in 121 dispatch, because of like how stringent our job is. We're not calculating like wheels up times and crew duty times and rest periods, like and finding hotels and getting hotel information for the pilots and like that's all crew scheduling. We don't touch any of that. That's their world of FAR 117s. We stick with dispatch. Um, there's a lot of stuff that 135 guys do that like we don't touch it at all. Uh, we are responsible for joint responsibility um, with the pilot in command exercising operational control with the authority to initiate, conduct, delay, and terminate flights. Um, that's our primary. We're going to flight plan, and we're going to flight follow and make sure that they're safe, and we keep the big picture um, in sight and let them know of any issues that they could run into and keep them out of those issues as best as possible. I know my buddy over at at, uh, at his job, if he even flight plans, which I don't think he even flight plans over there. I think the pilots do the flight planning. Um, they can communicate some stuff, but for the most part, legally, they just like the pilots are basically like they're the ones responsible for operational control um and any issues they run into are solely their own responsibility whereas in part 121 dispatch we are using joint responsibility with the pilot and command so if the pilot screws up um depending on what the screw up is it can also be found as my fault too if he flies into a thunderstorm well that first thing that the faa is going to do is well why didn't you tell him about the thunderstorm 135 guys don't have to do that um, you know, we do. We have to tell them about the turbulence and icing and thunderstorms and any issues getting into an airport if there's like flow issues or low-level wind shear or braking actions nil, like whatever the case may be. We have to constantly keep our multiple flights up to date at all times. Um, <clears throat> so it's just two very, very different worlds. Um, absolutely, any kind of any kind of experience that you can get, definitely do it. In the dispatch world, if you're wanting to go to a major carrier, your best option, your best route is go get your dispatch license. If you can do an in-person um, course, I would hands down advise to do the in-person. Um, I have a really good friend of mine. He's, uh, I, and I will admit, he's very new to aviation, whereas you know you, you aren't. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you'll probably understand that, like, say somebody like him wouldn't. Um, but nonetheless, like I, had, I sat down with him. His wife is my girlfriend's CrossFit coach, and I went to go pick my girlfriend up from the gym, and he was in a room studying. And he was actually learning METARs and TAFs and NOTAMs and stuff like that, and how to decode them and what they mean and all that. And he's doing the online course, and just me and him sitting together for an hour and explaining different things to him about METARs, TAFs, and NOTAMs. Um, helped him tremendously compared to him trying to learn it on his own 
uh, that's been the common denominator that I found with a lot of people doing the online stuff, is that not having that human instructor to explain to you how and why versus like reading the stupid little explanation that the book says like well this is why it's the answer and the book always has like some you know big fancy language that like just doesn't resonate in the mind very well um just me and him sitting together for an hour like accelerated his learning of metars tasks and notums by like a hundred his words um got through that portion a lot faster than he would have had him and i not just sat down for an hour and talked uh, and I showed him some stuff. Um, so if you can do the in-person, I highly recommend it. You will finish way faster. You'll have your certificate faster. And that's that's the best thing about dispatching, especially right now. Like, there's no better time to become a dispatcher than right now because everybody is so short. Like, Delta has drastically changed their procedures for, like, hiring new hires for the better, for the better of the new hires um, because of the shortage. They need more people. So, <clears throat> the best thing for you to do, in my opinion, would be to attend an in-person course if you can. Uh, it's about five weeks long, 4500 bucks. I went to Institute of Flight Operations and Dispatch, IFOD, in Dallas, Texas. Kick-ass school, awesome people, very high pass rate. Um, and get your license in five weeks. You can even start applying for jobs, like towards the later end of your course, like within your like your last week or two weeks of, of school, you can start applying for jobs. I thought even has um, companies come in and interview um, people who are in school. And that's another thing that you would miss out on is they might have like a regional or a part 135 come in to do job interviews, um, which is what they did when I got my first dispatch job. Um, that's an opportunity you wouldn't have if you don't do the in-person. Um, so get your dispatch license as fast as possible. You'll probably have to go to a regional somewhere for a short period of time. I worked at Trans States Airlines for two years in St. Louis. We operated uh, Embraer 145s um, for American and United. And um, then I went on to my current company. I've been on our current company now for um, about five and a half years. Seven years of dispatch, I'm already a manager. It's kick-ass. Um, so you probably won't even have to do two years, probably not even a year at a regional. In all honesty, we just hired some guys with as low as four months of experience. You know, our thing is we're not trying to hire people and teach them Dispatch 101. We want them to learn Dispatch 101 and the structure of a Part 121 operation, like crew scheduling, maintenance control, what airspace flow programs are, what ground stops are, like the operational side of a 121. Learn that foundation, and then we can take them and build on top of that foundation. The name of the game is getting your license as fast as possible so you can get that little bit of experience and jump over to a, a major carrier and from there you're building that seniority that we just talked about that is so crucial to getting that quality of life that you want by choosing the uh the shift that you want uh so the faster that you're in the, the faster you start building seniority and the faster you start getting what you want now at a major you're gonna be on reserve for a while uh potentially um because you know when you go to a major carrier you're you're competing against a lot more dispatchers than you would at a smaller major like Frontier or Spirit or Allegiant or you know something like that. Because um, the smaller the group, the less people you're competing against, and you know the more you get what you want. That's why, like, I mean, by year two, I was getting the the, the shift that I wanted. And that's because our group was was fairly small. We've since doubled in size, um, and other carriers are growing as well, which growth is always a great thing. Um, <clears throat> that that would be my recommendation is in person course dispatch license get a get some experience at a 121 and then start applying at the majors and I promise you you'll be at a major before you know it they, it's they're hiring fast and they're hiring a lot right now <clears throat> for the new job I will possibly be scheduling pilots for their similar training nice etc I love Flight simulators and aviation also get flight benefit. Hell yeah. That's not a bad gig at all. Yeah, do that until you get your dispatch license if you can. Or even like, maybe stick out the job you're at now until you graduate. When you graduate, go run through a dispatch course somewhere if you can. If it's money that you got and you're able to do it, definitely do it. If you think about it, it's, I mean, it's not, like the first three weeks of the course are kind of hard. You're learning the pilot ATP written. 
uh, which is what dispatchers take. It's called the ADX. Um, that part's kind of hard. And then the last two weeks is just flight planning. Um, you squeeze through that shit. I mean, you're you can basically like write your ticket through life. Like it's dispatch is the best. Like if you're not gonna be a pilot, it's the best uh, job in the aviation industry. And I even say like it's it's a tight run against pilots because like you're not living out of a suitcase. Your head hits the same pillow every night. You get to ride in the cockpit as a Part 121 airline dispatcher. You get to ride in the cockpit. Any U.S. carrier, any domestic flight, you ride in the jump seat. I've flown up front with American, Delta, Spirit, Frontier, like most of them, um, on lots of different types of airplanes. So um, it, it is like by far the hidden gem of aviation, and it pays well, and the pay everywhere is going up. Like Delta Airlines, starting pay, $94,000 a year, starting pay. So once you go through training and you sign off that you can solo dispatch, you'll start making 94000 What is this? These little blips. Uh, but you'll be making $94,000 starting pay. Top out's like 175 I believe. Plus they get profit sharing and other incentives like that. Um, I think they also get paid for having a dispatch license, which I think all airlines do that. We pay just for having a dispatch license. It's like a extra little add-on on every paycheck. Let's see, bottom altitude. We've got top of descent coming up real quick. Bottom altitude is going to be, looks like 3,500 feet. Damn it, wrong way. And let's go down. Perfect timing. Those ILS push buttons armed. We're going to go, how long is this? We're going to brief up the approach real quick in a second. Nine thousand feet. We'll go. We'll break low. Sweet. <clears throat> My college is online. Better grazing. I mean, it's worth. I mean, if, if you think you can do it, um, definitely go for it. I, I think you just get through it faster. Um, by doing the in-person, although it's probably an added cost to that. Plus, if you have to go somewhere, like, I don't, where do you live, if you don't mind me asking? Um, if you have to go, like, let's say if you had to go to Dallas and you don't live in Dallas, then, you know, you're having to pay for lodging as well. So, obviously, that adds on to the cost. Um, but I think it's costs that are well worth spent in how quick you can get your certificate and get basically your life going. Because once you get to a major, then you can start planting roots and have that, you know, have that sustainability in life and that consistency that everybody wants. <clears throat> and Drew, um, he is correct. Yeah, forty-five hundred to five thousand dollars. I know I five when I went to I five was forty-five hundred bucks. Although the VA did pay for mine, um, but yeah, it was forty-five hundred bucks for just the course itself. Compared to becoming a pilot, I mean, hell, that's like half of the price of just getting your PPL, much less the rest of your ratings. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. And so then at the least, you know, if if you don't do the in person, at least you don't even have you don't even have to go out of town to take your ADX because you will have to go to an FAA uh, testing facility to do your ADX as well as your oral and practical. You're right down the road from Jepson, so yeah, you can definitely uh, do that. Shit, man. I mean, if if you're in Denver and you got Jepson right there. And you wouldn't have to like pay for a hotel and stuff. I, I think it would be in your in your benefit to do in person. Again, it's up to you, man. And obviously, like I don't you know know your finances and what kind of money you got laying around and all that. Being a college student, probably not a lot. Um, but <clears throat> that's the other thing too is if you were to keep the job you have now. Talking about you got a lot of downtime. If you keep the job you have now, it's everything is really slow, right? And Go ahead and graduate. Then as soon as you get done graduating, enroll in the online course. And that way, while you're at work, you're making money to study and do your school. And that way, even if it takes you a little bit longer, you're getting paid to go to school, essentially, than not working and going to the school in person. 
So I, I think, too, it would be best for you to stick out the job you got now, even though it's really annoying for the next month, two months. And then that downtime that you have that's irritating now will ultimately benefit you by being able to knock out your classes, get your dispatch license, and then go spatch. Hell, maybe you can get straight on with Frontier. I mean, they're out there in Denver, obviously. Um, you know, with with the, the your your education and like what you're getting your um, stuff in, uh, your degree in, um, that might be enough to persuade them to at least give you an interview uh, without having any prior experience. Um, but I will say, just even like six months out of regional goes a long, 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 long way. Like just doing interviews with people who've had no experience compared to people with a few months of experience, it's a night and day difference in what they know uh, in the structure of a 121 operation. All right, so let's brief up the approach real quick. Let's come over to charts. All right, so we've got the... Uh, has run 1H, planning for runway 28, uh, and this is applicable, as you can see here, runway 28, our nav arrivals, max 250 knots below 10,000 feet or as instructed by ATC. We will comply with the 250. Uh, we're going <coughs> to transition at Azrun, which we are five miles from as of right now, and uh, we're going to be at or above Dismo, flight level 140, uh, at or below KF-124, um, at or below flight level 120, at KF-124, and then between 7,000 and 5,000, KF-125, until we reach uh, a Dova, between 6,000 3,500 feet, max 230 knots. From there, we're going to join the ILS. We're planning ILS Zulu, runway 28. Frequency is 108.5. Final approach course is 284 degrees. Final approach fix is Ardal at 1,800 feet. Decision height, so above ground, is 200 feet. Makes a decision altitude, if we're going to go based off a of barometric altimeter, would be 368. So this is sea level, and this is ground level. Uh, runway elevation is 168. So if you take the 368, subtract 168 from it, that gives you 200. Let's see. From there, we have a standard 3-degree glide slope. We have approach lights. The Pappy on the right. If we go miss, we'll climb to 3,000 on a 284 heading. To shoot this approach, we need 200-foot ceilings uh, with RVR 550 meters. Currently, weather is winds 210 at 25, quad 9 on the viz, vicinity showers broken at 500, overcast at 1,000, temperature 6, and the altimeter is 0981. For runway 28 right, we have high intensity runway lights, center line lights, uh, high, high, uh, I don't know, highless, highless? <laughs> I don't know how you say it, but anyways, more lights. Um, approach lights, Pappy on the right. 3 degree glide slope on the Pappy as well, so it's in conjunction with the uh, glide slope of the ILS, which is always good. HST-B1, oh, is RVR reporting. Uh, it could just say RVR, like that would make more sense. That's what we do in the States. Glide, from the glide slope, we have 9,085 feet of usable runway. It's 197 feet wide. Once we touch down, it's going to be a right-hand turnoff. We're going to plan to park at the terminal remote east apron. Uh, so we do have a hot spot at the intersection of uh, runway 28 and runway 19. So we'll be looking for any traffic there. We do have one inbound arrival ahead of us that we know of. Uh, but he should be on the ground and out of our way well before we get there. And hopefully, if, uh, if I don't do a shitty job, we'll turn off at Bravo 1, I guess. I've never seen a dash in between, but Bravo 1. And taxi our way in. Kilo 3, Charlie 3, into the apron. And because it is an ILS, we do have the ILS push buttons armed. Auto brake low is planned. We've got a bottom altitude of 3,500 feet, and the aircraft is in managed descent, so we should meet all of our crossing constraints. Crossing constraints are enabled on the EFIS panel, and all else looks good. Uh, I guess the other thing to know is what our transition altitude is, because I know it's different. Transition level is issued by ATC. That's real interesting. I've never didn't know they did that. That's cool. Well, we'll call it 5,000 feet like we did leaving. 
Uh, so we need to update the McDo real fast. Perf. Next. All right, so 0981 is in there. Temperature 6 is still in there. And the winds are 210 at 25. So one knot stronger. Minimum's 200. Transition out to, this says 7,000. I guess we'll go with 7,000. It knows more than I do. <clears throat> and does this have... All right, let's go 250. Go ahead and slow her up. And we'll throw out the spoilers. slowing down nicely so again um, because the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius and we have visible moisture which is the broken at 500 overcast at a thousand feet that's clouds visible moisture right so uh, we are going to turn on or land with the engine anti-ice on I'm well connected at United nice I'm quite happy about it actually I got a good friend of mine that just went there he was renting one of my bedrooms as his crash pad, so that's $500 a month that I'm losing out on. Thanks, United, for hiring my buddy out from under me. <laughs> uh, he's a great dispatcher, really good dude. Uh, so I'm quite happy about it, and I just want my life back to normal because I work around 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. I feel you. That's actually what I used to work when I uh, was a dispatcher. And eight months is quite, you know, not efficient for me, and I want to do something more than just sit around. I hear you. Um, yeah, and a lot of getting getting hired at a major is kind of who you know. Uh, definitely helps if somebody can put a word in for you. Same in my airline. I got hired where I'm at because of a, a buddy of mine. Um, he actually started out being my my boss when I was a ramper at Delta, and then tables turned, and uh, he was a station manager at another another station. I was a dispatcher. And uh, he was tired of what he was doing, so I told him, hey, man, go get your dispatch license. And then he got his license, went to Sky West, then came to the current company. I guess that's the guy ahead of us. Where's he going? Those are 210. I guess 1.9 is a little bit... bit better okay let's go secondary copy active uh, we'll switch it to room a one nine I'm gonna do uh, Zulu Azure and 2K. Cabin pressure is going buck wild. All right, let's slow this descent rate down because we're going to be flying just a little bit longer. We'll level off at 7,000. Get that engine any ice on. F-155. All right, let's pull heading. And secondary, activate. Then we're just going to go direct. Eh, KF-159 will work. Direct, KF-159. Insert. There we go. Gonna yell at me. I know.
Hear you, bro. All right, so now we need to change that center line. So let's go here, fix info, next, clear out Ardol, and final approach, or the final fix is Namta. And we want a heading 014. And that will draw out our center line out this way. So we're at 7,000 feet, looking good. 250 knots. And now we'll slow down to 230. <coughs> Capital Vic traffic. November 966, November Kilo is uh, 20 miles to the east. We'll call base for runway 19. Careful, Vic. Yeah, man. You are absolutely welcome. And also, if you ever have any questions, anything related to dispatch, um, my discord is in the description so feel free to shoot me a dm if you have any questions about the process whatever if you know other dispatchers and obviously you know reach out to folks that you know um but if there's anything i can do to help you out man just holler all right let's take it down to 35. we'll do 3,000 for now 22 actually that's where we want to go <clears throat> gonna head out have take pre grizzlies game there you go <laughs> all right josh well appreciate you man thanks for coming to hang out with me today and uh keep on trucking through that training you'll be done before you know it buddy damn damn trick-or-treaters all right zach that's what the playback's for. You can always go watch the playback. Traffic, easy 8. Oh, gosh, I'm going to call it 58507, vacating right on runway 19. And, well, as we say, that would probably was clear. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so for 19, we'll just brief this up. Uh, final approach. Where are we at? Red nav. So the uh, island's frequency is 110.3. That's in there. Uh, final approach course is 194 degrees. They got 192. That's fine. Final approach course is Namta at 1,800 feet. Um, we actually have a cat. What is this one? Oh, we got a cat too on this one. Nice. So let's change that. We'll just go ahead and plan for it just in case. Oop. 100. Um. So we're playing the Cat 2 ILS, minimum is 100 feet. Um, runway elevation is 161. We've got a 3 degree glide slope, approach lights, Pappy on both sides. If we go miss, it'll be 3,000 on a 194 heading, which is uh, runway heading. And shoot this approach, we need 100 foot ceilings, RVR 300 meters. We're good on both of those. Now, instead of a right hand turn off, it's going to be. Another right hand turn off, and we'll take Sierra 2 down Echo 2. We'll cross. We've got a hot spot in that area, so we'll be very vigilant of traffic. Uh, Echo 3, Echo 4 to the, the apron. Cool. All right, let's lower down. Pause the music. Turn up the sounds a bit. <coughs> Have a big traffic. 966 November Kilo. Turning base. Nine mile final. Runway 19. Careful, Vic. Uh, 
Alrighty, I see Vinny plus 10. Let's go flaps one. Speed checks flaps one. On the approach. Arm autopilot channel two. Traffic, traffic, easy, 850, eight, 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 runway 28 at Echo 3. 28 Echo 3, okay. Alt star. So, flaps 2, speed checks, flaps 2. And traffic, traffic, easy, 850, clear, runway 28. <coughs> Alright, 5 mile final. Let's check. Uh, it's already activated. Cool. Manage speed. Gear down. Arm spoilers. And flaps three. Lead off on that airspeed while we're still a little bit wings level. Start coming down on that glide slope. And flaps full. Flaps full. Landing checklist. Oh. Damn, I didn't know this one fall down here. Landing checklist. Cabin crews advised. Auto thrust speed. Auto brakes low. Ecomemo landing all green. Landing checklist is complete. Cap traffic. 966 November Kilo. 3 mile final over May 1 9. Alright, let's lock the old chair in place. I should have already done this. 1,000. Alright. My airplane, we're stable. traffic out there to our right. No, he's no factor. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Hundred above. Minimum. Light slow. Continue. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Ten. Five. Very nice, sir. Well, thank you. Spoilers, reverse green and desail. 70 knots. Start the timer. Alright, where are we at on this here? Peace. This so one go all the way down to the end. I'll take it. Negative 98. I'm showing. So my overlay said like negative 180 something, and Valanta says negative 177. I'll take it though. Those winds were a little crazy. I don't think I've landed in steady state winds like that on Microsoft Flight Sim. Let's 
Sierra 2. Oh, okay. Kelvin traffic. 966 November Kilo is exit of the runway at uh, Sierra 2. We'll be taxing over to the uh, remote east apron via Sierra 2, Echo 2, Echo 3, cross 28, Echo 4 to the apron. Kelvin. All right, let's clean her up once we get turned down the straightaway. Jerky. Alrighty. Let's clean her up. Oh, I know why I was. Alrighty. Let's go. Weather. Boom. Boom. Flight directors ILS. Flight directors ILS. Pop. Start. Pew. So, Karen, it's because um, – so this is a delivery flight, right? So, like, at the company, uh, the flight would be uh, Spirit Wings 9966. But for customs uh, regulations, the call sign has to be – this is, like, ATC stuff. The call sign has to be um, November 966, November Kilo, so the registration number. Uh, it's a customs thing um, more than anything else. We got a three minute engine cool down. Uh, I bet there's some chargers. Better not ring the damn doorbell. Start that. A poo? Interesting traffic, Feral Line 401 is eight miles from the ILS from a 19. We just landed on 1-9. Pretty good ride all the way down. Nice steady state wind around 25 knots. Uh, prepare to crab a little bit. Other than that, it's not too bad of an approach. Good thank you so much. Kevlovic traffic. 966 November kilos crossing. Runway 28 at Echo 3. Kevlovic. Traffic 966 number kilos crossed runway 28 at Echo 4. We are clear of all runways. Kept it. Any rain down there? No, no rain. Uh, had nothing on the approach. Uh, just a little bit the higher ups. Did have engine NIS on for the uh, icing, but other than that, it's uh, pretty smooth and clear. Wonderful. Thanks so much. It's my first time flying in Europe on uh, VATSIM and everybody is so nice. I'm really enjoying it. I know we are a lot kinder than you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, everybody in the States is so serious. I mean, I flew into LAX on an event once and the first thing I got was a um, document from the controllers on how to fly in VATSIM. Well, I think I know that controller too. He's uh he's a little serious for the uh on a lack of better words I guess. Or lack of nicer words. Yeah yeah, I'll just like Alright. Lights are off. Us out somewhere over here, and we'll remember it for uh, our next leg. Hopefully, we get to fly tomorrow. 70 and 71. Let's see if we can get anything for GSX. Parking, and of 
course it skips. Captain X traffic, fair line 401, show final 193 mile. Go to gates, maybe? Set a parking brake and watch this guy. There it is. Alright sir, I'm streaming so some folks are watching you. I wouldn't say it's a lot, but some. Oh god. Look at that crab. <laughs> That's not bad at all. Sounds like a Phoenix model. I mean, it's a little floaty, but shoot, that's not bad at all, especially with the wind. Yeah, no, uh, that's true. It's too bad I don't know how I can throw my boat, you know, my bubble boat. Okay. I think right side is less of a taxi for you. Vacating Sierra 2 and then Echo 2, Echo 3, cross 284. Once we get rolling into this gate, <clears throat> I'll shut down number 2. And parking brake set. APU's on, shutting down one. There must be trick or treaters. The boarding requested. Oh, I didn't ask, but okay. I was going to request the boarding, but I guess it's already happening. And I think IGS is who we use for um, helping us out when we get to Kevin Vicks. That's kind of cool. Fix my chair. Nice. Let's get that uh, APU on, or the uh, GPU on. Fill that. Well, guys, welcome to Kefovic. That's kind of a fun flight. A lot of fun doing it on Vatsim in, in uh, Europe. So, uh, it's my first time doing. It's pretty sweet. And if, uh, if you go to YouTube and you search wrong side simulations, so I fly from the wrong side of the airplane, the right seat. Search wrong side simulations. You'll be able to go back to the playback and watch your landing.
think that transmitted. But uh, yeah, cool. So the next leg for the delivery, um, I'm going to try to do it tomorrow. i got to take my girlfriend's car in at 9 in the morning to get a, a patch put on her tire. Um, so I think right after that, come straight home and fly the uh, Keflavik Detroit leg. Uh, it's about twice as long as this one. I believe it's roughly six hours. Uh, so it'll be it'll be a long one. It'll be a long haul. <laughs> Everybody likes long hauls for celebration flights. But um, that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, I don't have to go into work till a little bit later. Although I want to make sure I still get you know adequate snap time before uh, going into work. That'd be pretty good. And. Um, but yeah, I, I want to try to get that leg in tomorrow if we can. Why is it frozen? Oh. So, uh, hopefully that's what we can do tomorrow. Hope I got enough time for that tomorrow. Um, yeah, so that landing rate, looking at a uh, solid negative 177. Per Valanta. Oh, I forgot to turn on the uh, throttle cam during uh, that last approach. Got the dog laying over there. Nah, that's my bad, guys. Forgot to turn that on. Um, <clears throat> negative 177, I'll take it. Landing G force of 1.07. Uh, well, how much gas do we have on the airplanes? We'll want to plan this tomorrow. We've got 25.7. Yeah, we'll just have to get more gas tomorrow before we uh, head over to Detroit. Ah, uh, oh, Tim! I'm assuming you are probably uh, the nice fellow taxiing by me as we speak. Um, but, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for joining the Wrong Side Simulation channel. This is actually the... I know that alarm's too long. Um, we're actually celebrating 500 subscribers today. Uh, and just to fill you in on a little bit about myself, um, I am a real-world... Uh, flight dispatcher or dispatch manager at a major US carrier here in the States and um, I fly from the wrong side of the airplane the right seat and I try to teach a little bit of what I know um, from my my point of view and perspective as a dispatcher uh, as well as a lot of uh, a lot of time jump seating around in the cockpit of, of multiple different types of aircraft um, so anyways man thank you so much for uh, subscribing and, and welcome to the channel and uh, I got a, a lot of really nice nice uh, nice folks in the chat to hang out with and uh, get to know and whatnot. Um, so thanks, I appreciate the support, my friend, and uh, hopefully I can see your name uh, sometime in the future in the chat. Um, and again, we're going to try this. Want to deboard crew? Uh, sure. I want to spend the night here in Keflavik. I think my GSX is dying, but um. This is a delivery flight we're doing today. Uh, it's one of my special projects as a dispatch manager as I process the delivery of new aircraft from uh, Air, from Airbus. Um, so that's what we're replicating today. Uh, November 966, November Kilo. And uh, tomorrow we're going to try to squeeze in the long leg from Keflavik to Detroit, Michigan, where the airplane will uh, be received at the Spirit Airlines hangar and be processed uh, to be later put into service uh, several days from the time the plane lands. So, all right, guys. Well, thank y'all so much for those of y'all who came to hang out for this uh, nice three and a half hour long flight. Uh, we just rolled over. Wow, hit the wrong button. Just rolled over three hours and fifty-four minutes. Obviously, been in the gate for a few. Um, a nice long flight. Tomorrow will be nice and longer. <laughs> That's awesome, Tim. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining, man. I appreciate it. Um, and that's one of the best things too with, with my channel that I really enjoy is, is still having a smaller channel allows me to like actually get to know y'all. So uh, I look forward to getting to know you and hopefully seeing your name in the chat. But, but uh, guys, that's going to wrap it up for now. Uh, I've got trick-or-treaters that are probably going to start rolling in here soon. I might try to uh, squeeze in, go get some, come, some candy real fast and uh, feed these little bastards. Um, but until next time, guys, thank you all so much for coming to hang out. Uh, always appreciate 
y'all's company on these nice long flights. I hate that I don't get to stream more than I do. Just, you know, work is so busy. Got a girlfriend, you know, life. Um, girlfriend keeps up her shit and we kick her, her kicking her out. I'm going to stream more. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyways, guys, thank y'all so much. I can't say it enough. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for the journey to 500 subscribers. It's been a little over a year to reach this. Uh, probably would have came faster if I could stream more. Um, but, you know, life. So, uh, <clears throat> anyways, we'll talk to y'all on a, hopefully tomorrow morning. If not, uh, in the very near future. And until then, y'all keep it on the wrong side. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.